Aria's Christmas Wish Written by Victorine E. Liskey Narrated by Liz Crane Chapter 1 Kendra gripped Aria's gloved hand, gently tugging her toward the car. The sun was already setting, and she knew Aria would get cranky if she didn't get dinner soon. It's not like they could do more Christmas shopping anyway. She was out of money. Come on, sweetie. We have to get home. But I want to make a wish. Aria slipped out of her grasp and disappeared into the throng of people rushing in and out of the shops on Main Street. Kendra sighed and pushed through the crowd. She knew where Aria was headed, so she didn't panic. She gripped her shopping bags and followed after her headstrong five-year-old daughter. Aria, come back here. Man, that kid was fast. She was already across the street and headed toward the water fountain in the middle of town square. Aria loved it, and every time they came downtown, she insisted on tossing a penny in and making a wish. Kendra slowed as her boots crunched on the snow. Aria's silhouette leaned over the edge of the fountain. She could see why her daughter thought the structure would grant her wishes. The lights did make it look magical. Plus, the town square was decorated up for Christmas, adding to the atmosphere. Aria glanced up at Kendra, her blue eyes sparkling with the kind of joy only a child has. Can I have a penny? All right, she said, setting down her shopping bags and digging in her purse. But you really should stay with me. I don't want you to get hurt. I looked both ways. Aria rolled her eyes. And I'm glad but you disobeyed me. Kendra knelt down so she was eye-level to her daughter, and I need you to obey me. She held out the penny, pinched between her fingers. Aria tried to grab it, but Kendra pulled it away. Okay? She asked. Aria huffed. Okay, Mommy. Kendra gave her the penny, and Aria closed her eyes and concentrated. Her little eyebrows furrowed, and her cheeks grew red from holding her breath. Then she tossed it into the water and smiled. I did it! I wished it so hard it's going to come true this time! Oh no, the poor girl. What had Aria wished for? Kendra had been trying to get her daughter to tell her what she wanted for Christmas, but Aria refused to say and Christmas was only a week away. Kendra crossed her fingers. Oh, what did you wish for? Mommy, you know I can't tell you. Then it won't come true. Yeah, that's what she was afraid of. Kendra bit her lower lip. You can tell me. It doesn't count if you tell your mother. Aria gave her mom a sideways glance. Of course it counts. Ellie says I can't tell anyone ever or it won't come true, and Ellie knows, so I can't tell you. Is it a Christmas wish? Yes. Aria took Kendra's hand and they started toward their car. The poor girl seemed so happy. How disappointed would she be on Christmas morning when her wished-for present wasn't under the tree? Inspiration struck Kendra. Would you like to ask Santa for it, then? Maybe he will be able to help your wish come true. Arya thought about it before nodding. Okay. Problem solved. Perfect. After dinner, I'll help you write out your Christmas list for Santa, and we'll mail it to him. Aria stopped short, causing Kendra to almost stumble. No, Mommy! Santa knows what I'm thinking. I just have to ask him in my mind. Don't you know the song? She started singing, Santa Claus is coming to town. Kendra sighed and nudged Aria along. All right. She wasn't going to win this battle. Maybe she could work it out of her another way. 
Her daughter continued to sing until they got into their car and Kendra cranked the ignition. The radio came to life and Home is Love came on. Kendra instinctively shut it off. She didn't need to hear the famous country singer Jacob Mitchell belt out how there is no place like home. Not when his actions spoke so much louder than his words. Hey! Aria called from her booster seat. I like that song. Turn it back on. Kendra choked on her saliva, coughing for a moment before she turned to her daughter. You know that song? Aria nodded. Yeah, Ellie says it's the best. Can you turn it on, please? I like it. Kendra stared at her daughter for a second before flipping the radio back on. Jacob's smooth voice came through the speakers. Every time she heard it, she had the same reaction. Her pulse quickened and a shiver ran down her spine. Not in a creepy, someone's going to murder you way. No. This kind of shiver was pleasurable. The kind you get when the man you love kisses the back of your hand. Unwanted memories force their way through her mind. Jacob sitting next to her in chem lab. The excitement when he first spoke to her. The song he wrote for her. She blinked back the emotions it all stirred in her. She would not cry, not in front of Aria. You should sing this song, Aria said as she hummed along to the music. Kendra's heart jumped into her throat. If she started singing Jacob's song, she would definitely be a sobbing, blubbery mess. She shook her head. Sorry, sweetheart, mommy's driving. She put the car into drive and pulled out onto the street. The song ended and she relaxed with relief. She wouldn't have to think of Jacob again until one of his other hit songs made its way onto the radio. He had so many now she'd lost count and she knew each and every one of them by heart. Not that she listened to them in public. These were the songs she kept for the times when Aria was asleep and she was alone, when no one would hear her crying. The steering wheel shook, and her car made a terrible noise. Kendra gripped the wheel and slammed on the brakes. Oh no, this couldn't be happening. She could not lose her only form of transportation. Not when her boss was already upset that she missed work last week when Aria was ill. She guided the car to the side of the road as it sputtered and died. She pressed her hazard lights. Kendra reached for her cell phone and found an empty pocket. Sweat broke out on her forehead. Had she left her phone at home? She was always setting that thing down and forgetting where she put it. This wasn't good. She peered out of the windshield at the stretch of highway that took her to her small rented farmhouse. There wasn't much traffic on this road. How long would she and Arya have to sit before some farmer would come along and rescue them? Well, what happened? Arya's small voice came from the back seat. Something's up with the car. Are we going to have to walk home? No, honey. At least, she hoped not. It was a good half-mile walk, and the sun was now down. Arya would freeze. Kendra pushed away the panic, threatening to strangle her, and got out of the car. I'm just going to check the engine. She shut her driver's side door and made her way to the front of the car. Unlatching the hood, she lifted it up. She stared at the components, barely visible in the darkness. What was she doing? She had no idea what she was looking at, even in the daylight. How was she supposed to know what to do in the dark? She once again stared down the stretch of highway. One way led to town, the other to the interstate. Surely someone would be coming along soon, right? She rubbed her hands together as the seconds ticked by. It was useless to stand in the cold. At least in the car, she'd be shielded from the wind. 
She climbed back inside, leaving the hood up so whoever drove by would see they were in trouble. Did you fix it, Mommy? Arya stared at her with her large blue eyes. Kendra huffed warm air on her hands. No, sweetie, I didn't. Arya squirmed in her seat. When will it get fixed? A lump formed in Kendra's throat. Soon. Headlights peeked up over the ridge and Kendra breathed out in relief. She once again got out of the car and waved her hands in the air when the headlights neared. The car slowed and then stopped. The driver's side window rolled down. Thank you for stopping. Something happened with my car and I... Kendra? The deep voice stopped her heart and she froze as she took a good look at the man behind the wheel. The man who had left her in Highland Falls six years ago. The only man she had ever loved. The same one who had broken her heart into tiny shards of pain. She swallowed, her tongue suddenly made of sandpaper. Jacob? He stared at her before snapping out of his trance. What are you doing out here? D did your car break down? Her brain stuttered, then finally registered where she was, standing in the middle of the highway. Uh, yeah. Do you need help? Jacob winced. Duh, of course you do. That was a stupid question. He hopped out of his car and walked over to the engine. He pulled out his cell phone and turned on the flashlight. Kendra had been so shocked to see Jacob in Highland Falls that she hadn't been thinking properly. But as she watched him fiddle around under the hood, she realized she needed to get Jacob away from them, and fast. Jacob stood back. Looks like it's the timing belt. And from the antifreeze under your car, looks like you blew your water pump. You're gonna need a tow. You know, if you could just loan me your phone for a second, I can call and get someone over here. Then you don't have to wait around in the cold. You can leave. He gave her a funny look. Why would you call someone when I'm right here? I can give you a ride. No, you don't have to. You're headed into town. It would be out of your way. Why? Where are you going? The Thompson farm? His eyebrows shot up. And even in the dark, she could see the surprise on his face. You live in that huge house? Embarrassment heated her cheeks. No, we... I live in the servant's house. That old shack out back? Yeah. Shack was a good name for it. But it was all she could afford. And she'd fixed it up to the best of her abilities. It actually wasn't a servant's house, but that's what they'd called it as kids. Probably a small house used for farm workers. She nodded and rubbed her arms. Was it getting colder? Sorry, that wasn't what I meant. I was just... He towed the snow on the ground. Look, let me take you home. It's just up the road. It's not out of my way. No, she couldn't do that. She didn't want him to see... A knocking sounded on the back window and panic shot through her. But it was too late. Jacob had already seen Arya. Kendra opened the door and Arya stared up at them. When are we going home? I'm cold. Anxiety, embarrassment, and another emotion she couldn't name wrestled inside of Kendra. Soon, sweetheart. Jacob pointed. Who's that? Arya. It came out just a whisper, so she said the name louder, then tacked on, My daughter. Jacob stared at the little girl in the back seat. You have a daughter? He swallowed. Is she? No, Kendra said quickly. She's not. Then who? Jacob? Kendra interrupted. Can you just take us home, please? It's freezing out here. Jacob nodded slowly. Yeah, sure. Kendra opened her car door and unbuckled Arya. This nice man is going to take us home. Finally, 
Arya said loudly. Jacob chuckled. Been waiting a long time? No, Kendra said at the same time. Arya said, yes. You know how children are. Kendra lifted Arya from her booster seat and wondered why she'd said that. Jacob didn't know how children were. He'd never had any younger siblings, and now that he was a big star, he probably would never know. She shoved those thoughts away as she transferred Arya's booster seat to Jacob's car, a rental from the looks of it. So how old is she? Jacob stared at Arya. Kendra's mouth dried out. Five. Five? His eyes widened. She grabbed her packages and locked her car. She didn't want to have this conversation. Not now, not in front of Arya. Jacob opened her door for her and she climbed into the passenger seat. He drove to the Thompson farm, the silence in the car deafening. When he pulled up to her house, she reached to open her door, but he placed his hand on her knee. Stop. Don't get out yet. We need to talk. And there it was, the words she'd dreaded for the past five years. Her chest ached. This was not what she'd planned to do today. I need to get my daughter inside, she whispered. That's fine, get her inside. Then please come talk to me. She paused, then nodded. There would not be any putting this off. She had to face it now. Feeling numb, she got Arya out of the car and inside the house. She hung up her little coat and turned on a cartoon. I have to go talk to that man. I'll be right outside, okay? Arya nodded, not paying much attention. Kendra opened the front door and Jacob was standing on her small porch, leaning against the railing. She stepped out and shut the door, unable to look him in the eyes. He exhaled and ran a hand through his hair. Five years, Kendra? I got pregnant when I went to Europe. The practiced lie slipped out with ease. It's what she'd told everyone. No, she didn't know who the father was. Yes, it was a stupid mistake. No, she wasn't going to seek for child support. Yes, she could do this on her own. Jacob winced. But she looks... Her father had blonde hair like you, that's all. Kendra rubbed her hands together, holding her breath that Jacob would take her word for it. That he would leave, thinking there was nothing tying them together. Seeing him was already causing her pain. She couldn't live through it a second time if he came back into her life only to leave again. Jacob huffed and shrugged. Okay, I'll believe you. Relief pooled in her stomach. He wasn't going to push it. Thank heavens. Now, maybe he'd go away. Chapter Two Jacob stared at Kendra. Even now, with her in faded jeans and an oversized coat, she took his breath away. Her hair was pulled up into a messy bun, tendrils falling to the sides of her face. Just looking at her brought back all the old feelings. He shoved his hands into his coat pockets and suppressed them. He knew that ship had sailed. The bridge had burned. All the cliches applied. He and Kendra were never getting back together. So, what are you doing these days? Her gaze skittered around, landing on everything but him. I'm just working at the dollar store. He peeked into her living room window. The little girl sat cross-legged in front of the television. Everything about her screamed she was his, from her pointed nose that looked just like his mother's, to her ears that stuck out a little too much, like he saw in the mirror each morning. He didn't know why Kendra was lying about it, but he was going to find out the truth. He cleared his throat. That's nice. It's a job? The girl jumped up and ran into the other room, out of his line of sight. 
A longing surged inside him, and he craned his neck to see if he could catch another glimpse of her. Well, Kendra said, wringing her hands. I'd better go inside. Thank you for the ride. Mind if I come in? The words just popped out. He couldn't stop them. Kendra looked like she'd been asked to dip her toes in blood. Uh, I'd love to catch up. She swallowed and looked around the yard. I guess? Great. He knew she didn't want him there, but he wanted to see the girl. Possibly his child. He reeled with the thought that he might have a daughter. A little girl who didn't even know who he was. His throat tightened. His own father had left when he was young. He'd spent years hating him for it. Was that how his daughter would grow up? Filled with hate for him? The thought made him sick. Kendra opened the door and led him inside. The living room was warm and he slipped out of his leather coat. Kendra took it and hung it on a hook on the wall. She motioned to the couch. Have a seat. I need to go find Aria. It's too quiet. She exited the room and Jacob sat down, taking in everything. He'd never been inside this place. It looked pretty much like one would imagine an old farmhand's house from the 20s would look like. Wood floors, plaster walls, and hand-me-down furniture. A small plastic tree stood in the corner, decorated with ornaments. No presents were under. Adora the Explorer radio sat on the coffee table. It was the kind with a microphone attached, and he wondered if the girl ever sang in it. Kendra came back in the room carrying the girl who had red lips and a sucker in one hand. Aria got into the Halloween candy. I swear that stash will never deplete. Looking at her face full on in the light of the living room, Jacob had no doubt. This was his daughter, and Kendra was lying about it. Why? What had happened? Why hadn't she told him she was pregnant? He would have stayed. He would have been there to support her, married her. They'd be a family now. But instead, she'd turned a cold shoulder to him. Rejected him. Kendra sat on the farthest possible spot away from him on the couch, her butt so close to the edge it looked like she'd fall off any second. Arya squirmed and Kendra let her down. The little girl stared at Jacob, then extended her sucker. Do you want a lick? Stunned, Jacob recoiled from the wet, sticky candy she offered. Kendra laughed, a beautiful, musical sound. A rush of memories surged in his mind, and he had to force back the swell of emotions that followed. Kendra's laugh. It had inspired his first hit song, the way she laughs. He hadn't heard her laugh in almost six years, and now he was sitting only a couple of feet from the woman he'd loved with all his heart, the woman who broke him. Kendra pulled Arya's arm back. Honey, he doesn't want to lick your sucker. Jacob smiled weakly at the young girl. No, thank you. Okay. Her gaze had already returned to the cartoon on the television. Kendra leaned over and kissed the top of her daughter's head. It looked like she did it without thinking, which made the gesture even sweeter. Jacob had so many questions, he wasn't sure where to begin. So, you're still living here? In Highland Falls? He winced, another dumb question out of his mouth. Kendra nodded, not looking at him. Yes. And what does your daughter do while you're working? She goes to kindergarten during the day. My mother takes care of her after school. Does your mother still live out by the truck stop? Kendra shook her head. No, she moved to a small apartment by the elementary. It works out great because she can walk and pick up Aria after school lets out. She still doesn't drive? No. 
Kendra shoved her hands in her pockets. What kinds of things does Aria like? Kendra pointed to the television. Dora the Explorer? He smiled at that. I used to like that show, too. In fact, when I was young, I saw the Dora underwear in the store. I cried because my mom wouldn't buy them for me. Why wouldn't she buy them for you? They were little girl panties. Oh. Kendra smiled, but it was strange. Jacob didn't want to leave, but the conversation was waning. He wanted to get to know his daughter. He knew nothing about her. What does she want for Christmas? Kendra sighed and blew a strand of hair from her face. I wish I knew. She won't tell me. She thinks if she tells me her secret Christmas wish, it won't come true. Kendra lowered her voice and looked at Arya, who was now absorbed in the show. She doesn't realize that it can't come true unless I know what it is. He slowly nodded. Maybe I can help with that. How? Maybe I can get her to tell me. You? Kendra made a face. How are you going to do that? His mouth popped open in mock surprise. What? I'm persuasive. You don't think I can do it? No. I bet I could get it out of her if I spent enough time with her. Kendra pinched her lips together. Too bad you probably are leaving soon. What with your crazy lifestyle? I took the rest of the month off. It's been too long. I want to have Christmas in Highland Falls. You're not on tour or anything? The tour starts in January. Well, I'm sure your mother wants you to spend that time with her. Yeah, Kendra was right. His mother had been asking him to come visit her. Begging, really. She would not be happy if he spent his vacation with Kendra. But he couldn't get the possibility of Arya being his daughter out of his mind. Yes, he said simply. I guess you'd better leave then. Kendra looked so hopeful it was like a slap in the face. A cold glass of water doused on him. Kendra didn't want him there. And he knew if she had any say in it, he wouldn't be seeing her or her daughter again this trip. Jacob slowly nodded and stood, his chest constricting. You're right, I should probably leave. Relief came over Kendra's face as the wrinkles on her forehead smoothed over. She smiled. Well, good night. Thanks again for helping me get home. What will you do with your car? I'll call Henry. He'll give it a tow and fix it for me. She ran a hand over her hair. I just hope it doesn't take long to fix. Jacob knew Kendra didn't want him around, but he couldn't help it. If you need a ride tomorrow... Kendra shook her head. No, I'll be fine. You go spend time with your mother. She will be so glad to see you. And that was her final shutdown. Jacob took one last look at Arya, then grabbed his coat from the hook. He stared at Kendra, his words sticking in his throat. This might be the last chance he had to get the truth out of her. His last chance to get her to confess. Desperation shot through him, and he took a step toward Kendra. Are you absolutely sure she's not mine? Something flashed over Kendra's features. Fear? Determination? Maybe both? He couldn't tell. She squared her shoulders. I'm sure, Jacob. She was either a very good liar, or she didn't believe Arya was his but he couldn't let it go. Not when the evidence was written all over Arya's face. He swallowed and shrugged into his coat. He didn't want to force anyone to take a DNA test, but it might come to that, because he was not going to walk away from his daughter. He nodded. Have a good night. He left, giving Kendra what she wanted. At least, temporarily. Chapter 3
The curtain fell back in place as Kendra turned around, unwilling to watch Jacob's taillights any longer. Her heart raced, and she could barely catch her breath. Her head was still reeling that Jacob was here in Highland Falls. She'd known this day would arrive, but she'd honestly thought it would be years in the future. He was a huge country music star, on tour and constantly appearing on television. She thought his schedule would be too crazy to allow him to come back to the small town. Arya held out her empty lollipop stick. Can I have another? No. Kendra took the trash from her daughter. We're late eating dinner, sweetie. Let's go make something yummy for your tummy. Hot dogs? Kendra frowned. Mommy's tired of hot dogs. How about hamburger casserole? At least she could sneak in some vegetables. Aria wrinkled her nose. I want a hot dog. Kendra didn't want to make a casserole that her daughter would just pick at and then toss in the trash. It was hard to make dinner for just the two of them, especially when her daughter was so picky. She sighed, too tired and emotionally spent to fight this battle tonight. All right, hot dogs. Yay! Aria clapped her hands together. Kendra stuck a pan under the faucet. It was a small thing to make her daughter happy, and she would go to bed with a full stomach. Unlike herself, she was tied up in too many knots to eat. Seeing Jacob again had stressed her out. It had brought back too many memories. Her hands shook as she finished boiling the hot dogs. She served them with applesauce, which she knew her daughter would eat. After dinner, she let Arya get out the coloring books. Don't peel the paper off the crayons, Arya. Her daughter nodded. Okay. She started scribbling on her picture. Kendra picked up the phone and called Henry. He answered on the third ring. Hello? Hey, Henry, it's Kendra. Kendra, how's that little munchkin of yours? She's fine, but my car isn't faring as well. You know... Henry said, his low voice coming through the line. I got a call from Jake Mitchell a minute ago. He said your timing belt had gone and it blew your water pump. I have a tow truck out there right now. Jacob called? She was so shocked she was speechless. Henry continued. He's even taking care of the bill for you. But I have to admit, there are four cars in front of yours, so it will be a few days before I can look at it. Her throat closed. A few days? Shelly would freak out. She was the manager of the dollar store, and on her good days, she was crabby. On her bad days, she made Cruella de Vil look nice. Are you sure you can't get it in sooner? I'm sorry, I can't. But Jake said he'd loan you his car services. He even left his number for you. He rattled off Jacob's number, and Kendra had no choice but to write it down. She didn't know anyone who could loan her a car or give her a ride. Her mother didn't drive, and she'd spent the last six years desperately trying to make it on her own. Sure, she knew other people in the community, but she wasn't close enough with any of them to ask for something like that. And Highland Falls had no public transportation. She would bet all her lucky pennies that no one in the town had heard of Uber. She cleared her throat so she didn't sound like a frog. Thanks, Henry. You bet. I'll call you when your car is done. Okay. She hung up and stared at her cell. Jacob paid for her car to be fixed? Why would he do that? And why was he offering to drive her to work? She pressed her lips together. Jacob didn't owe her anything. She was fine on her own. She didn't need his charity. The urge to call him right now and chew him out surfaced, but she shoved it away. The fact was, she needed the help. No matter how fiercely independent she wanted to be, she couldn't walk the three miles into town and get Arya to kindergarten and herself into work. She had to accept Jacob's offer. She put Arya to bed before she gave in and called Jacob on the phone. Curling up on the couch, she dialed his number. 
he answered on the first ring. Kendra? His voice made her tongue stick to the roof of her mouth. She forced herself to speak. Hi, Jacob. I'm glad you called. I figured you'd need a ride to work tomorrow. Yeah, she said, unable to keep the sigh from her voice. I do. It's no problem. What time should I come get you? Arya has to be to school by eight. Can you come at quarter till? Of course. I'll see you at 7.45. Relief flowed through Kendra. Thank you. I'll see you in the morning. She hung up the phone. What a day this had turned out to be. Jacob was back in town, and she would have to see him every day until her car was fixed. Christmas was a week away, and her daughter would be disappointed if she didn't figure out what the little girl was hoping for. Happy freaking holidays. Chapter 4 Jacob hung up the phone just as his mother, June, walked into the living room. It was odd to be back in his childhood home. The smells, the pictures on the wall. It was all so surreal. Like no time had passed at all since he'd left. Yet, it seemed as though the outside world had changed so much in those six years. Who was that? His mother carried a tray of Christmas cookies setting them down on the coffee table. It looked like she'd been baking for the last three days. Kendra. His mother banged her knee on the tray and a few cookies spilled onto the carpet. Oh! She grabbed onto the coffee table. You okay, Mom? She nodded as she picked up the fallen treats. Silly me! I'm so clumsy! She placed a hand on her chest near her throat. I'll go throw these away. Did you hurt yourself? He followed her into the kitchen. She tossed the cookies into the trash and turned to him, forcing a smile. No, dear, I'm fine. She paused, her gaze flicking to his cell phone. Why were you talking to Kendra? Her car broke down. I helped her get home. He paused, studying his mother. She'd always been a fragile person. He'd blamed it on his father leaving her when he was young. But he wanted to know something, and he couldn't stop the words from coming out. Why didn't you tell me she had a child? His mother flushed, and she took a step toward him, putting her hand on his shoulder. I didn't want you to feel hurt. I knew you and she had just broken up. For you to find out she'd had another relationship so soon would have been painful for you. That made sense, but couldn't his mother see the resemblance in Arya? Didn't she suspect? He almost asked her about it, but noticed her fingers trembling. She was upset. He didn't want to fluster her even more. Come, let's go back into the living room. We can sit and catch up. His mother smiled and the mood relaxed. Yes, let's do. I've missed you so much. I know, Mother. He pulled her to him in an embrace. I've missed you too. Did you see the town square all lit up for Christmas? Jacob wondered if it looked any different from when he'd grown up. He doubted it. The same lights, the same decorations, weathered with age. No, I haven't been downtown yet. His mother sat on the couch and patted the seat next to her. Sit. It's so good to have you home. He obeyed. What have you been up to lately? His mother pointed to the tray. Have a cookie. He picked up a snickerdoodle, one of his favorites, and bit into it. He moaned with pleasure. Just like you used to make them. She smiled and smoothed her house dress. I added a pinch of extra sugar. You always like them with extra sugar. Has work been busy? His mother worked at the local bookstore between the pages, even though he'd taken care of her financially so she didn't need to work. She liked the bookstore, and it gave her something to do. She nodded, 
It's the season for shopping. We've had lots of people in. Good. I'm glad they're thriving. There are a lot of bookstores struggling right now. We moved the children's section to the back. Got more toys in. I think that's helping. It's always good to diversify. He picked up a gingerbread man. She squirmed in her seat. She seemed nervous for some reason. How are things going with your work? Did you finish the songs for your next album? Yes. I was backed right up against the deadline, but I managed to finish it. Good. I was hoping we could spend this holiday together. Just the two of us. Jacob swallowed. Sure. He chose his next words carefully. I just have to help Kendra get to and from work a few times. And I need to help her with another small thing, but I'll have plenty of time to spend with you. His mother frowned as if she had a bad taste in her mouth. Why would you want to do that? She dumped you. I would have thought you'd be over her by now. Jacob stiffened, her words stinging. Of course he was over Kendra. Everything had happened years ago. They'd been in high school, for heaven's sake. They were both adults now. He wasn't pining after her anymore. It was Aria, his possible daughter. He wasn't going to let that go. But he wasn't about to mention it to his mother just yet. She would get very upset. He was sure of that. He slowly nodded. I am over her. It's not about that. His mother clutched her necklace. I just miss you so much, and I want to spend every moment that we have together. I want this to be the perfect Christmas. I don't want it to get ruined. Ruined? How would it get ruined? He patted her knee to give her reassurance. Don't worry. We'll have plenty of time together. Maybe tomorrow we can drive to Denver. I hear they have a Polar Express train ride. She smiled at him like he was five, and this was the best suggestion ever. He chewed the rest of his cookie while he tried to think of a nice way out of that. Finally, he said, Let's think about it since it's a three-hour drive. We could stay the night in Denver, do some shopping. She clutched her hands together, much like a child would. Maybe. She patted his hand. It's so nice to have you back here. It's nice to be back. Jacob picked up the magazine his mother had on the coffee table, and a letter slipped out of it onto the floor. Oh! His mother darted out and grabbed the letter so fast she was just a blur. But not before he saw his father's handwriting on the envelope. She held it to her chest. You don't need to see this. He squinted at her. Uh, I think I do, judging from your reaction. She paled. No, this isn't for you. It has nothing to do with you. His heart thumped. Let me see it, mother. I already know who it's from. She shook her head, but he stood and held out his hand until she slowly placed the letter in it. He examined the postage cancellation date. It was mailed last week. He pulled out the letter and sat down on the couch to read. June. I know you said Jacob doesn't want anything to do with me, but I'm his father. I have a right to talk to him. I raised him for the first five years of his life. I watched him take his first steps. It's not right for you to ban me from him. I need to talk to him. Please write back and give me his address. Nathan. Jacob stared at the slanted handwriting, mixed emotions swirling in him. His father wanted to talk to him. After all these years, a part of him rejoiced. That little boy inside who craved attention from a father who wasn't there. He looked up at his mother. What does he want? His mother frowned. The same thing he's always wanted. Money. You're famous now. He is coming after what he thinks is his share. Anger pooled in Jacob's stomach. Well, if that's what he wants, he can get a job like the rest of us. 
His mother nodded. That's right. All he ever did was take. You don't need that in your life. Jacob crumpled up the letter. Don't write him back. If he keeps harassing you, let me know. She nodded. I will. The last thing Jacob needed was his father coming back into his life and demanding money. If it was fine for him to break all contact for 19 years, it would be fine to continue in the same way. Jacob didn't need to talk to his father to know what a louse he was. His actions showed that loud and clear. Plus, now he had a daughter to worry about. Figuring out everything with Arya was more important. Chapter 5 Kendra rushed into the living room, scanning the carpet. She got down on all fours and searched under the furniture. It was a 900-square-foot house. Surely Arya's shoes were not hiding in some black hole somewhere. How was it that her child could manage to lose her shoes every single morning they were running behind? A knock came on her front door and Kendra groaned. That would be Jacob. Just great. Before she had the chance to get up from her knees, Arya ran to the door and opened it. Hello, she called out. Hello there, Jacob's smooth voice said in return. Kendra scurried to the other side of the chair so Jacob wouldn't see her behind sticking out. She could see his boots on her steps. Is your mommy home? Arya giggled. She's right there. Jacob came into the living room and shut the front door. Kendra jumped up, sure her face was now as red as a tomato. Hi. He gave her a quizzical look. Hi. What are you doing? She laughed nervously. Looking for Arya's shoes, she lost them. Oh, I'm sure we can find them. He turned to Arya. Can't we? Her daughter nodded. Yes! He crouched down next to her. Why don't you take me to your room and we'll look under your bed? Kendra's throat dried up. It was startling how much her daughter looked like Jacob when they were right there, face to face. She'd spent so long trying to forget his face she hadn't noticed. Arya grabbed Jacob's hand and led him through the room. Come on, I'll show you. Jacob winked at Kendra as he walked by, and her heart fluttered. Why did he do that? Out of instinct? Some kind of reflex he had? Maybe he was used to flirting with the women in Nashville. Maybe he thought he could charm her. Fat chance there. He was the one that threw her away like a used tissue. He was the one who ignored her pleas for him to come home. She would have told him about the baby had he cared enough to come home and talk to her. Telling your boyfriend that you're pregnant isn't something you do in a letter. She wasn't about to do that to him. But when he refused to come talk to her, even after she bared her heart to him, she finally saw their relationship for what it had been. Temporary. A fling before he left town for good. He was using her. He didn't really care. And now he was back, winking at her. She had half a mind to smack him upside the head. Found them, Arya called from her bedroom. Kendra huffed. She'd looked under the bed. They weren't there. When Jacob came back into the room, she glared at him. I know they weren't under the bed. Yep, yeah, they were under a dress that was on the floor. Nice. Now Jacob probably thought she was a slob. Oh. He took a step toward her, hesitated, then shoved his hands in his coat pockets. Are you ready to go? Yeah, after Arya gets her coat and backpack on. I got my coat! I got my coat! Arya called out. She ran to Kendra, her mittens swaying from each sleeve. She always needed help zipping up the coat. Kendra threaded the zipper and pulled it up. Now, get your backpack. We're running late and we're taking up poor Mr. Mitchell's time. Jacob rocked back on his heels. 
Don't hurry on my account. I don't have anywhere else to be. I want to sit by Mr. Mitchell, Arya announced. Kendra shook her head. You have to sit in the back in your booster seat. She can sit up front with me. Jacob shrugged. I don't mind. What was he doing? Undermining her? She turned to him, sure that fury read on her face. Except that it's illegal for her to sit in the front and dangerous because of the airbag. She could die. Jacob's eyes widened and he took a step back. What? I didn't mean... I know you didn't mean to suggest something dangerous, but the fact is you don't know anything about raising a child, so don't stand there and pretend you do. Jacob seemed horrified. Kendra, I'm sorry. He swallowed and came closer, putting his hand on her shoulder. I never would want to do anything to harm Arya. I was just trying to please her. Guilt surfaced in Kendra's stomach. He was right. He was being nice. That's all. She overreacted. He squeezed her shoulder, and her body reacted with a cascade of tingles over her skin. She was so surprised, she gasped. What? Nothing. She pulled back. What was happening? Why was she reacting to him? Their relationship had been years ago, and she was so over it. She didn't need to start getting some stupid crush on Jacob Mitchell. She turned from him. We're late. Can I show Mr. Mitchell the wishing fountain? Arya peered up at her. Kendra softened when she saw her large blue eyes sparkling. To be a child again and live that magic of Christmas. There was nothing like it. She would do anything to be able to give that to her daughter. She sighed. Not right now, sweetie. We have to get you to school and mommy has to work. Later then? She wavered. She didn't want to say no to Aria, but she didn't want to agree to spend time with Jacob either. She crouched down and pulled on Aria's mittens. We'll see. I'd love for you to show me the wishing fountain sometime. Jacob said as they exited the house. Yippee! Arya ran to Jacob's car. We can throw a penny in! Then she turned to him with a worried expression on her face. Unless you don't have a penny. He smiled at her. I have lots of pennies. Kendra snorted. That was an understatement. Jacob opened the back passenger door and turned to her. Do you want a penny for a wish, too? He raised one eyebrow, and it sent more tingles through her body. Oh, heavens. This was ridiculous. She had grown up since high school. There was absolutely no reason to get all weird around Jacob. She gave him a frown. No. Mommy, you should make a wish. Then maybe Santa will bring you something special, too. I know he's going to bring me my wish this year. Kendra placed her daughter's booster on the back seat, then exchanged a glance with Jacob. He stepped in. I'll tell you my secret Christmas wish if you tell me yours. Arya giggled. No, I can't tell. It won't come true if I tell. Jacob mouthed. Sorry. He shrugged and opened her door for her. You tried, she said, her voice low. Let's get you to school, Jacob said after he climbed into the driver's seat. Did you get to do anything fun today? Arya started talking about the different stations they had at school and her favorite activities. Kendra smiled at Jacob. Now you've done it. She won't stop until you pull up to the school. His laugh lines crinkled. That's okay. I like hearing her talk. She's adorable. Kendra's heart warmed. He was right. Aria was a special little girl. After they dropped Aria off at kindergarten, an awkward silence filled the car. Kendra stared out the window at the inflated snowmen and lighted candy canes decorating the lawns of the neighborhood. I heard it's supposed to snow this afternoon. Jacob tapped the steering wheel with his thumb. 
Is it? Two inches. Kendra whistled. Just what we need. More snow. I think it will make it pretty. I haven't had a white Christmas in a while. It doesn't snow in Nashville? She peered at him. Yes, but not as much as here. He shrugged. And I'm usually traveling so much, I don't get to stay in one place long enough to enjoy it. Well, you'll get to enjoy it a bunch, as you scrape your car and try not to slide off the street. He chuckled. Remember that time when we tried to go ice fishing? And you about fell in? Yeah, I remember that. She tried not to laugh, but it bubbled up anyway. I wasn't going to fall in. You were paranoid. The ice was cracking. I heard it. That was the branches rustling. He gave her a sideways glance. But I didn't mind you being scared. You just wanted to hang on to me tighter. She sobered at the memory. They had been so in love. At least she'd thought he was feeling the same thing that she was. Guess he proved that wrong. She swallowed down the emotions surging in her throat. Jacob pulled into the dollar store parking lot. Wait, he said when she was about to hop out of the car. She looked at him. His face held something she wasn't quite sure she could name. Let's forget about the past. What's done was done. We can't change it. But we can start fresh. Start fresh? Like start a new relationship? She steeled herself and shook her head. No, Jacob, I can't start fresh. I can't start anything with you. I have a daughter to think about. I didn't mean that. He reached out and took her hand. I just want to let go of the awkwardness between us. Her fingers warmed under his touch and she stared at their hands. We're practically strangers, she whispered. Things are bound to be awkward. Then let me take care of that. Let me take you and Aria out to dinner tonight. We can go to her favorite restaurant. It will give us a chance to dispel some of this. He motioned between them. Then it won't be so tense. Kendra wanted to say no. She didn't want to spend time with Jacob. But she knew Aria would love it. And with Christmas presents being so lean this year, she didn't have much else to give her. Plus, she was feeling guilty for keeping Jacob away from Aria. All right, she said. Great. What's Aria's favorite place? We don't have to go to her favorite place. It's a 30-minute drive. His eyebrows raised. I don't care. What is it? Pizza Fun House in Ashland. Then Pizza Fun House it is. He grinned at her. Have you ever been there? Nope, never heard of it. A smile crept onto Kendra's face. Well, this will be a fun evening, then. Great. See you at five. Okay, then. See you this afternoon. Kendra walked into the dollar store feeling happier than she'd been in a while. Jacob would surely get scared off at Pizza Fun House. It was more like Pizza Madhouse. All those kids running around and he'd for sure head for the hills himself. Then she could have a nice, quiet Christmas without thinking about him being in Highland Falls. Chapter 6 Jacob walked into the restaurant with Aria tugging on his index finger. He wore a baseball cap, which usually shielded him from anyone recognizing him. Come on, I want to show you my favorite game, Aria said. Lights flashed and electronic sounds beeped at him as she pulled him through to the arcade. Kids climbed through a tunnel suspended above him, and Aria giggled as one kid fancy jumped into the foam pit. It was bright, noisy, and kids were running everywhere. This is pretty cool, Jacob said as Kendra trailed after them. You think so? Kendra sounded surprised. Um, yeah. I would have loved a place like this when I was a kid. Kendra seemed skeptical. 
He had been hopeful their evening would go well. They'd chatted in the car and things had almost felt relaxed. But now the tension seemed like it was back between them. As a kid, sure, but try bringing your daughter here and trying to keep track of her with all this going on. She motioned to the noise and lights. It's fine. I'll stick with her. She looked like she was trying to figure him out. You will? Sure. It's not a problem. He crouched down to see the mole-hitting game Aria was pointing at. You take this hammer, and you wait until they pop up, but you have to put a token in to play. Awesome. Let's get some tokens, then, he said. I can order the pizza, then, if you'll play with her. Kendra pointed toward the counter. What kind do you want? Cheese, Aria called out. Kendra looked at him. And you? I'll warn you, the pizza here kind of tastes like cardboard. He chuckled. That's fine. Get whatever you like. I'll cover it. Okay. Kendra left and Jacob pulled out his credit card to swipe on the token machine. He played several rounds of whack-a-mole before Kendra came back. The pizza is ordered and we have a booth saved right over there. She pointed to the corner. Jacob rubbed his hands together. He was getting hungry. He didn't even care if it was cardboard. He was ready to eat it. Good. Let's play in there, Arya called out as she ran toward the foam pit. I'm in, Jacob said, running after her. Arya climbed the steps to the pit, but then she hesitated, looking up at him. She didn't say anything, so he prompted her. What's wrong? I'm scared. His heartstrings tugged. Oh, sweetie, it's fun to jump in. It's not scary. She grabbed a hold of his hand. Jump in with me. He hated to disappoint the child, but he also didn't want to get into trouble. I don't think I can. This is for children. I'm too big. One of the kids walking by spoke up. You can get in. They make them so moms and dads can play with their kids. See? He pointed up, and Jacob looked at the tunnel above. There were parents crawling through. Oh, okay. He lifted Arya up and tucked her into his side. Should we go together then? Yes! Jacob jumped, and Arya squealed. The foam blocks were soft, and they bounced a couple of times before settling on top. Arya giggled profusely. Do it again! Jacob tried to stand, but the foam blocks were difficult to maneuver in. Arya climbed out of his arms and scurried on top of the foam until she was out of the pit. He tried to do the same thing, but only sank deeper into the foam. Uh, help! Arya laughed at him. Again! I'm not sure I can. Heat surged in his face when he saw Kendra approaching. Come on, Mr. Michel! He chuckled. It was hard for her to say Mr. Mitchell, and it came out more like Mr. Michelle. You can call me Jake. Arya clapped her hands. Jake, come here. I want to jump again. Kendra leaned over the pit wall and looked at him. Oh, no. You didn't. Yes, I did, and now I'm officially stuck. He tried once again to get out, but his butt just sank in, trapping his legs up. He wiggled, trying to flip over, but it didn't work. You may have to call the fire department. Kendra pinched her lips together, but he could tell she was trying not to laugh. Oh, dear. Yeah, this isn't funny, by the way, so stop laughing. Her shoulders shook, and she had trouble meeting his gaze. I'm not laughing she said between giggles. Arya looked up at her mother and laughed too. Jacob squirmed until he was able to get one leg down into the foam to find the bottom. He didn't want to admit how long it took. After he finally got himself standing upright, he then crawled over the blocks to the exit. Yay, again! Arya bounced on her toes. Kendra put a finger over her lips hiding another smile. I don't.
don't think we have enough time. The place closes at ten. Funny. Now that I know how to work the foam pieces, I will be able to get out much faster this next time. He picked up Arya and jumped again. Her laughter was worth every second of humiliation. They called a number over the loudspeaker. The pizza is ready, Kendra said. I'll go get the table set up. It should be stone cold by the time you get out. Ha! You're a real comedian. Jacob once again tried to roll over so he could crawl out, but sunk in the foam instead. Great, he whispered. It took him a few minutes, but he finally got out and joined Kendra and Arya at the booth. It smells good. He picked up a slice and bit the end. Kendra watched him closely. He chewed, then swallowed. Okay, you're right, he said with a sigh. Cardboard. Arya giggled. It's pizza. See? Kendra picked off a piece of pineapple from her slice. It's the crust. It has no flavor. Jacob stared as Kendra picked off another piece of pineapple. Did they put pineapple on by mistake? No, I ordered it with pineapple. She gave him a sheepish grin. Sorry, I like the flavor of the juice, but not the actual chunks of pineapple. He made a face. Is this like when you order pistachio ice cream but pick out all the nuts? I don't like the nuts. There are so many choices of ice cream that don't have nuts in them. He bit back a smile. But I like the taste of the pistachio ice cream just without the nuts. Kendra smiled. I can't help it if I'm odd. He laughed, loving the way her cheeks reddened. You're not odd. You're adorably quirky. Her eyebrows shot up and she leaned back in her chair. Maybe he should have kept that thought to himself. He almost wished it back, but then she smiled. I'll take it. He let out a breath he didn't know he was holding. Do you still buy a whole bag of gummy bears just to eat the red ones? I don't like the other ones, Kendra said, laughing. Arya's eyes lit up. I love gummy bears. I bet. In fact, I bet you've never tasted the red ones. Kendra kicked him under the table. You're such a brat. Arya pushed her half-eaten piece of pizza away. I'm done. Can I go play? Kendra looked at Arya's plate and frowned. You barely ate anything. Take at least three more bites before you go. Arya didn't look happy, but she nodded and took another bite. Nice. Jacob said under his breath. Good thinking. I've learned that if I let her, she'll play the entire time, and then once we get in the car to go home, she'll say she's starving. He chuckled. Sounds like me as a kid. Arya squirmed in her seat. She looked up at him. Can you sing that song? The table grew silent, and Jacob raised one eyebrow. What song, sweetie? That song you were humming. He didn't remember humming a song. Kendra just shrugged. When did I hum a song? When I was playing that game. Sing it for me. I liked it. He had been working on a new song earlier. Maybe it had been running through his mind. Arya, he's eating. Don't bother Mr. Mitchell. Jake. Arya patted his shoulder. His name is Jake. Kendra looked like she swallowed a marble. What? He told me, Mommy. She took another large bite of her pizza. Can I go play now? She said with her mouth full. Okay, Kendra said, not looking at him. Jacob stood so Arya could get out of the booth. Do you want me to go with her? Kendra shook her head. It's okay. We can watch her from here. Sit. Finish your cardboard pizza. He smiled at her. It's not that bad. Kendra gave him a half smile, then turned back to picking pineapple off her slice. He cleared his throat. Did I upset you? He asked. Just now? 
No. Jacob paused, his hands growing sweaty. She hadn't mentioned anything about their past before. Did she want to talk about it? Would he finally figure out what happened between them? But I upset you in the past. Her eyes narrowed a fraction of an inch before she stiffened. Let's not talk about that. What kind of game was she playing? She's the one who started it. Did she want to talk about it or not? You're the one who brought it up. She let out a breath. Sorry, forget I said anything. He let his shoulders slump. Maybe she didn't want to get into it, but he sure would like to know what happened all those years ago. Fine, I'll drop it. But someday I'd like to know what happened to make you cut off all communication. Her gaze snapped to his and she froze. Me? Cut off communication? What about you? Why didn't you answer my letters? A sick feeling grew in his gut. What letters? I never got any letters. Chapter 7 Kendra blinked, her face a stone mask. Her fingers trembled as she leaned forward. You didn't get my letters? Jacob's heart stuttered. No! He sat back in his chair, trying to wrap his head around what had happened. He'd never received any letters. When did you write me? After I got back from Europe. He'd been in Nashville, but he hadn't gotten an apartment yet. He was still living in that rundown hotel. Had the mail gotten lost there? How did she know where to write to him? He stared at her, confused. Where did you send them? Her face paled. I didn't. I gave them to your mother to send to you. Her voice came out as a whisper. Jacob's head spun for a second before the full picture formed in his mind, and he balled his hands into fists. His mother had held back letters from Kendra? What had his mother done? If he had any inkling that Kendra wanted him in Highland Falls, he wouldn't have left. And then it suddenly all made sense. His mother urging him to go while Kendra was in Europe. She always told him he had star potential. She knew he wanted to pursue music. And she didn't like that he was so serious with a girl right out of high school. All those times when he had dated Kendra, his mother had been supportive of him, but she'd always gently urged him to take things slow. To wait until he had a thriving career to date. She hadn't really liked Kendra much. He'd always thought it was because they were so young, but maybe there was another reason she didn't want him with Kendra. But maybe it was because she didn't want to see him potentially give up a singing career for a life in the small town of Highland Falls. But one thing still bugged him. Why didn't you answer any of my calls? I know we had that fight, but I was calling to apologize. Why didn't you answer? Kendra's cheeks flushed. I lost my phone in the airport. When I realized it, I was already in Paris. I called you from Lori's phone, but your mother answered. She said she'd give you the message to call Lori's phone if you wanted to talk to me. His mother... Again. He swallowed back a stream of curses. I swear, Kendra, she never told me. I'm starting to see that. I felt terrible for the fight we had. It was a horrible way to leave things before you left on your trip. But when I called and you didn't answer, I thought you were still mad at me. And then I got a call from an agent and I had to go to Nashville. I thought it was the opportunity of a lifetime. Kendra blinked back tears. Apparently it was. Jacob sucked in a breath. She was right. He was a famous singer now. But he'd lost her and lost his daughter. His emotions swelled in him as he looked into Kendra's brown eyes. 
He reached across the table and tentatively touched her hand. Look at what it cost me. A tear slid down her cheek as she stared at the table. I'd better clean this up, she finally said, pulling her hand away. The noise from the arcade filtered through to his brain, and he remembered where they were. He glanced over at Aria, playing the whack-a-mole game. He stood and picked up the empty paper plates. Don't run from me again, Kendra. We need to talk about this. She wiped at her cheeks. I don't want to talk about this right now. Not in front of Aria. She's not paying attention. Kendra turned from him. Please, not now. He followed after her to the trash receptacle. Okay, then, tonight. She stood silent for a moment before she nodded. All right. Jacob felt a weight lift from him. He would finally get to understand everything that happened six years ago. And he would force Kendra to admit the truth about Arya. He motioned toward the little girl. I'm going to go help her whack moles. That's fine. Kendra softened. She'd like that. Jacob almost turned around, but then he paused and studied her face. You okay? Kendra closed her eyes a moment. Not really. Before he could think, he pulled her into his arms. Like a muscle memory, he buried his face into her hair. She clung to him, melted into him. And he wished he could stay like that with her forever. But all too soon, she pulled back and broke the contact with him. When she looked up at him, he saw pain in her eyes. Thanks, she whispered before returning to the booth. He walked to where Arya was playing, his heart in his throat. Arya looked up at him, a brilliant grin on her face. I got him! Did you see that? I missed it. Do it again. Okay, she said, putting in another token. He watched her hit the moles, her little fist clutching the plastic hammer. She was so small, so delicate. His emotions surged. When she got bored with the mole game, they climbed into the giant tube and Jacob chased her around the above-ground maze. They played together until he noticed Kendra looking at the time on her phone. He motioned to Arya. I think it's time to go. Aww, she said. Do we have to? Maybe we can convince Mom to let us get ice cream on the way home. Ice cream? Yay! They crawled out of the tubes and he approached Kendra. Before he could say anything, Arya shouted, We're going to get ice cream! Kendra tilted her head. We are? If it's okay with you, he interjected. Please, Mommy! Arya clasped her hands together under her chin, and Jacob chuckled. There was no way Kendra would say no to that face. Kendra sighed. All right. He laughed. She's got you in her pocket. And what about you? Ice cream? Kendra raised an eyebrow. All right, she's cute. And she kind of melts my heart. Kendra seemed startled at his admission. Her mouth opened, then closed. Finally, she said, She is cute. Let's go. Jacob pulled on his coat. Excuse me, a woman said, stepping up to him. Are you Jacob Mitchell? He tugged his baseball cap down. Uh. He's Jake, Aria said. You are Jacob Mitchell. I thought that was you. Could you sign my napkin? She giggled and fished a felt-tipped pen out of her purse. I'm a huge fan. She shoved the napkin and pen at him. You're Jacob Mitchell? Another woman standing nearby turned to him. Before he knew it, he had a small crowd of people around him, shoving napkins and paper plates at him. He signed for about ten minutes before they thinned. 
A young girl, probably around twelve, came up to him and handed him a CD of his. Would you sign this for me, Mr. Mitchell? He picked it up and took her sharpie. You had a CD of mine at Pizza Funhouse? The girl blushed. We were listening to it in the car on the way here. Well, isn't that nice? He smiled at her. What's your name? Candace? He wrote, To Candace. Enjoy the holidays. Then he signed his name and gave it back to her. Have a great evening. Thank you. She ran to her mother and Jacob smiled. That made his night. He scanned the room for Kendra but couldn't see her. He slipped on his coat and walked outside. Kendra was fastening Arya's seatbelt in the back seat of his rental car. He approached them. Kendra stood up. Is it like that everywhere you go? No. Most of the time, there are lots more people. He meant it as a joke, but Kendra frowned. That's what I was afraid of. He took a step closer to her. It's not that bad. They're just excited, that's all. Yeah. That's just a reminder that this is your life now. He wasn't sure what to say to her. She closed Arya's car door, and Jacob helped her get into the front seat. Before he shut her door, he leaned down. Does it bother you that badly? She sighed. I think I'm just emotionally spent. Then let's get you home. He shut her door and then walked around the car. After he got in, he said, But first, ice cream. Arya yelled, Yes! Do you want chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate! And what about you? He nudged Kendra. Pistachio without the nuts? She smiled but shook her head. I'm fine, you don't have to get me any. Get ice cream, Mommy, it's good! Arya called from the back seat. Kendra turned to look at her daughter. Oh? You think I should get ice cream? Arya giggled. Yes! Well, will you tell me your Christmas wish if I get ice cream? No! Arya said like it was the silliest idea in the world. I can't tell you! Kendra shrugged. It was worth a try. An excellent attempt, Jacob said, chuckling. He pulled into the Dairy Queen drive through Last chance to tell me what you want. I want chocolate, Arya said. I know what you want, Goofy. I mean your mother. He shot her a look. I kind of want a banana split, but that's way too much ice cream. Well, if you want it, let's get it. I do, but I'd never be able to eat that whole thing. Then I'll share it with you. It will melt before we get home. Jacob gave her a wicked grin. Not the way I drive. Oh, stop it. Do you want the split if I help you eat it? All right. He pulled up to the window and ordered their food. The girl behind the window didn't recognize him until she was handing him the food. Her eyes grew wide and she almost dropped Arya's chocolate ice cream cone. Are you Jacob Mitchell? He nodded. I am. Oh my gosh, I love your music. She whipped out her cell phone. Can I take a picture with you in the drive-thru? He chuckled. Sure. She turned around and took a selfie with him in the background. He gave her his camera smile and she squealed after she took the photo. More workers came to the window to see what she was making a fuss over. It's Jacob Mitchell, she told them. After a few more autographs and photos, he said, All right, I'm backing up the line. I better leave. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. You're welcome. He pulled out of the drive-thru and entered traffic. After a few moments of silence, Kendra spoke. Does that ever get tiring? He shrugged. Sure it does. But you handle it so well. You're so nice to people. I wouldn't have many fans if I was a jerk to them. Traffic was light. It was always light in the middle of Nowheresville, Colorado. Kendra persisted. 
Other artists aren't that nice. Other artists have people complain about them on social media. So you're nice so you have a good reputation on social media? He glanced at her. No, I'm nice because it doesn't cost anything but a small moment of my time. Maybe they're having a crappy day, and I've just made it a little bit better. Kendra seemed to take that in, even though she didn't respond. He drew in a breath and let it out. I guess I just figure there's a lot of things in this life that can bring people down. What's a couple minutes of my time if I can make someone happy? She looked at him. You're a nice guy, Jacob. He smiled. That means a lot coming from you. Jacob pushed the speed limit a bit to get her home before her ice cream melted. Even still, it was pretty soft when they walked in the door. Aria, go wash the sticky off your hands and face and get your pajamas on. You can brush your teeth after that. Kendra hung up her coat as Aria dashed off. Are we going to talk now? Kendra sighed. She seemed tired. Let me get her in bed first. I'll help. Then the banana split will really be melted. I'll stick it in your freezer. Jacob grabbed the container and walked into the kitchen. He opened the freezer and stuck it on the shelf. He hadn't expected Kendra to follow him, so when he turned around, he bumped into her. Oh, sorry, he said, reaching out to steady her. She looked up at him, an expression on her face he couldn't read. He inhaled her scent. He couldn't help it. He always loved how she smelled of vanilla and coconut. His pulse quickened. I... She took a step back from him. I shouldn't have stood so close. It was my fault. It was an accident. There was so much more he wanted to say to her. He wanted to tell her how many nights he'd dreamt of her. How often he had checked online for flight information, longing to be able to come back and force her to talk to him. But he couldn't. Not when his career was taking off. He stared into her brown eyes. The eyes that inspired so many songs in his heart. The eyes that haunted him when he was alone. He reached up and touched her cheek with the backs of his fingers. Her skin was so soft. He'd missed this so much. She swallowed. I'd better get Arya into bed. Okay. He stepped back from her, forcing himself to stop touching her. He needed to get a hold of himself. You can teach me the nighttime routine. Chapter 8 Kendra folded her arms. Why was Jacob insisting on spending time with Arya? It was unnerving. She didn't want Arya getting close to Jacob only to be devastated when he left for another six years. Kendra knew all too well what that felt like, and she didn't want her daughter to go through that. But how could she object to him helping her put Arya to bed? She couldn't. Not when he was right there. And especially not when she had to do what she knew she had to do. She had to tell Jacob the truth. If she didn't, she would hate herself forever. It was easier when he was the jerk who left and ignored her letters. But now, he wasn't that guy. His mother was the one who kept her letters from him. How could she lie to him now? But first, she needed to get Arya into bed. Then she could tell him. Her fingers shook as she led Jacob into the bathroom where Arya was brushing her teeth. She was already in her pajamas. Great job, honey. I'm getting all the back ones, Arya said with her toothbrush in her mouth. It came out so garbled she was sure Jacob had no idea what she'd said. Kendra laughed. Good for you. Arya spit into the sink. Can Jake sing me his song? Kendra's stomach dropped. Memories of Jacob singing to her surfaced, and her throat closed. They were too private, too intimate. She didn't want to remember them. 
She shook her head. No, sweetheart, Jake doesn't have time to sing you a song before bed. I have time, Jacob said, and I don't mind. Arya squealed as she rinsed her toothbrush. Yay! She placed her toothbrush in the cup and jumped down from her stool. Come on, let's go in my room. You can sing in there. She grabbed Jacob's hand and pulled him into the other room. Kendra had no other choice but to follow unless she wanted to call attention to herself. And that was the last thing she wanted to do. She sat down on the chair in the corner of the room, the one she and Arya snuggled in when it was time to read her bedtime story. But tonight, Arya didn't climb up on her lap. She insisted on sitting on her bed next to Jacob. She looked up at him with such adoration in her eyes. Kendra was a fool to think she could keep Arya from latching on to Jacob. She obviously already was enthralled with him. What do you want me to sing? Jacob asked. I want you to sing that song you were humming earlier. Arya leaned so far into him she was practically sitting on him. Jacob pulled her the rest of the way up on his lap and she beamed, her eyes bright. Okay, he said softly. He began to hum a tune Kendra had never heard before. But for some reason, it sounded familiar. It was his style. The tune was so... him. He hummed for a few minutes before Arya started humming with him, once she'd heard the chorus a couple of times. Listening to her daughter making music with her father caused emotion to swell in Kendra's throat. She'd seen her daughter's love for music in her early on, always singing. Her favorite toy was her Dora radio. She'd sing along, her little microphone pressed to her lips. She'd inherited her love for music from Jacob. He ended the song and kissed Aria on the top of her head. And with that one action, Kendra knew the truth. Jacob had figured it out. He knew. He was too tender toward her, too loving. He had to know. She watched him tuck her into bed, pulling the covers up to her chin. Good night, he whispered. Will you sing me another song? He chuckled. No, you need to sleep now. Be a good girl and close your eyes. Then the sleep fairy will come. Arya did as she was told with childlike faith. After the sleep fairy comes, you'll fall asleep in no time. He leaned down and kissed her forehead again, then stood and stepped quietly from the room. Kendra crossed the room and joined him in the hallway, shutting off the light and closing the door to a crack. You have this bedtime thing down, Pat? She whispered. Beginner's luck, he whispered back. His smile crinkled his eyes, and for a moment she had the stupidest urge to touch his face. She shook the thought away. Let's go. She brushed past him and went into the small kitchen. I'll get the ice cream, you get the spoons. Jacob gave her a wink and her heart jumped. She could easily fall back in love with Jacob Mitchell. He was so easygoing, charming and warm-hearted. But she knew he was only in Highland Falls for a few days. He'd said it himself. He started on tour next month. No matter what, he would leave and she would be left alone. Like last time. She clenched her jaw and turned to get the spoons from the drawer. They sat down at the small kitchen table opposite each other, the dish of ice cream between them. Jacob spooned out a scoop with chocolate syrup. So I never got to ask you, how was your trip to Europe? Kendra stiffened. It was such an emotional time for her. It was in Europe when she realized she might be pregnant. And at the time, she thought Jacob was mad at her, so that tainted her trip. But there were some fantastic moments as well. 
It was the first time she'd been out of the country. The only time. And she was with Lori, her best friend at the time. She thought about what to tell him while he scooped some ice cream. It was amazing. What was your favorite part? There were a lot of favorite parts. The Louvre, the Eiffel Tower, getting to ride in a gondola in Venice, walking the Swiss Alps. It was all awe-inspiring. Surreal to be in the places I'd only seen on television. Did you get that picture you wanted? He remembered that? She had been a bit obsessed about getting the perfect sunset photo of the Eiffel Tower. She was surprised he remembered such an odd thing. Yes, I got it. He dug into the banana. Can I see it? She studied him. He seemed genuinely interested. She nodded and went into her bedroom to get out the album. She knelt beside her bed and pulled out the under-the-bed storage box. As she lifted out the album, memories of that time washed over her. There had been a reason she hid the album away under the bed, but not all the memories were bad. And as she sat back down and handed him the book, some of the good ones surfaced. He opened the album and she scooted her chair to his side of the table so she could see the pictures as well. She pointed. That was on the plane. Lori and I were so exhausted but too excited to sleep, so we got silly with my camera. Jacob chuckled. I bet your classmates loved all the sleeping pictures of them. Especially this one. She pointed to a pair of close-up nostrils. He laughed. Who was that? Jenna Jacobson. She never found out we took that picture. That's a good thing. She was kind of mean. Yes, and that's why we took it. Kendra laughed. She told him about the trip as they flipped the pages. Ah, there's the famous sunset photo, Jacob said, pulling the book closer. He examined it. It turned out really nice. You always had a great eye for photography. Thanks. Do you still take pictures? Kendra shook her head. No. Why not? You were so good at it. She looked around her kitchen. Not much call for photographers in Highland Falls. Not in the way that would pay the bills. I'm not in high school anymore, Jacob. He seemed sad. I know. He finished looking at the rest of the photos, and after the banana split was all gone, she knew it was time to talk about real things. It was time to tell him the truth. They had an awkward pause as she fiddled with the photo album, unable to look at him. Jacob hopped up and rinsed out the container then put the dirty spoons in the dishwasher. After he sat back down, he looked down at his fingernails. When did you find out you were pregnant? The question took her aback, but she should have known it was coming. Talking about the trip wasn't an accident. He knew, and he was wanting the truth. She took in a breath, finally ready to admit it. On my trip? He stared at her working his jaw. After a moment, he said, There was no guy in France, was there? She couldn't lie to him any longer. She shook her head. No. It came out a whisper. Jacob ran a hand through his hair. Why didn't you tell me about her? Because when I wrote to you, I begged you to come home so we could talk. I told you I had something very important to tell you. I bore my soul to you. And when you didn't come, didn't even answer, I thought that was my answer. She stared at the album, her vision blurring. He reached out and put a hand over hers. You felt rejected. Left behind? She nodded. Yes and I had no contact for you. I never got my phone back, so I lost all the numbers I had. Your mother was the only person I knew who could get in touch with you. She told me she'd send the letters. I had no reason to think otherwise. 
and I continued to call your lost phone long after the battery went dead. I thought you just didn't want to talk to me. I thought that was your way of breaking up with me. Kendra felt the weight of his words. She blinked back the tears she couldn't stop. I'm sorry. Jacob shook his head and put his arm around her shoulders. It wasn't your fault. My mother lied to me, to both of us. She's the one who has to answer for this. His arm warmed her, and Kendra allowed herself to snuggle into the spot where his neck met his chest. He smelled of musk and outdoors, like he'd spent the day hunting for the perfect Christmas tree. She closed her eyes and, for one moment, let herself think about what might have been. But it wasn't reality, and it could never be. She pulled back. Maybe your mother did us a favor, she whispered. Jacob opened his mouth, then closed it again. Why would you say such a thing? If you had gotten my letters and come back, I would have told you about the baby. And I would have stayed, married you. Kendra couldn't help the surge of emotion in her chest at his words. She believed him but it fizzled away when she faced reality. Yeah, and you'd be working down at Harry's Fish Fry, washing dishes or scraping fish guts for a living. Jacob stood so quickly, his chair nearly fell over. He crossed the tiny kitchen and scrubbed a hand over his face. Maybe, or maybe I could have made it anyway. We could have made it, together. Kendra shook her head. He was delusional. No one makes it in Highland Falls. No one even knows Highland Falls exists. It wouldn't have worked. Jacob blew out a frustrated breath. You don't know that. She slumped in her chair. Yes, I do. Because you were meant for greatness, and I was meant to stay here. Jacob came to her, took her hands, and pulled her to her feet. He stared into her eyes. I thought you didn't love me anymore. Do you know what that did to me? His touch warmed her. She looked into his deep blue eyes. Passion swelled within them. She turned away. She couldn't think about them together. Time had passed. Things had changed too much. Kendra, he said his voice pleading. Don't run from me. I can't help it. We're not the same kids we once were. Things are different now. He came up behind her and wrapped his arms around her, sending warmth cascading through her. Please. All he said was one word, but it rocked through her. She closed her eyes, melting into him. It was stupid and she knew she would regret it. But she wanted one moment with him, just one minute, where she could pretend she had him back. She turned to him, her heart beating so fast she could hear it pounding. He traced the side of her face with his finger. The action was both tender and intimate. But being with Jacob had always been that way. He leaned closer to her his lips just inches away. He threaded his fingers through hers. I've missed this, he said, his voice cracking. Kendra didn't say anything. She couldn't, even if she wanted to. Her throat was too dry. No words would come out. It had been too long without him. Too many months of endless cold nights when she had longed for his touch. Waited for him to appear in her dreams. And now he was here. It was almost unbelievable. She ran her hands up his arms, to his face. She needed to touch him, to feel his warmth. She needed this moment before she could go back to living without him. She wrapped her arms around his neck. He pressed his lips to hers, and she responded with a gasp. 
a thousand butterflies fluttered over her skin. Her nerve endings came alive, her scalp tingled. Every part of her body felt the electricity between them. He deepened the kiss and she clung to him, desperate for more. Emotions swelled in her and tears stung her eyes. Jacob's hand traveled up her back, pulling her closer. He kissed her so tenderly. She squeezed her eyes shut, tears rolling down her cheeks. Jacob cradled her cheeks, then jerked back. Are you crying? Kendra couldn't respond. Her throat was too tight. She was falling apart, one piece at a time. Jacob's touch was sending her to a place she refused to go because the pain was too much for her. But now, with him back, his lips on hers, she was remembering everything. The way things used to be. And she knew it could never be this way again. Jacob was leaving soon. She couldn't have him like she wanted. She turned from him. I'm sorry. I can't do this. Chapter 9 Jacob reeled, unsure of what exactly Kendra meant. Why was she crying, and why was she pulling back? He couldn't stand it. He turned her to face him. Can't do what? Kiss me? I can't relive our past. What was she talking about? He flexed his shoulder muscles. I'm not trying to relive our past. I'm trying to tell you what I want for our future. Kendra stepped back from him, her eyes wide. We can't have a future. Don't you see? A hole grew in his chest, a hollow, empty feeling, and it spread through him. Now that he knew Kendra didn't reject him all those years ago, he was wanting to reconnect. All he could think about was their future. Why not? You are a huge country star. I'm a small town girl. Did she think that mattered to him? Did she not realize how much he had loved her all those years ago? How much he still loved her, if he were being honest with himself? He took her arms. You don't have to be. Kendra's mouth dropped at his words, and he feared he'd come on too strong. What was he implying, that he wanted her to come with him to Nashville? Why was he saying that? They hadn't even talked to each other in six years. She would think he was mad. She backed away from him, as if his implication scared her. You're talking crazy, Jacob. He let out a breath and shoved his hands in his jean pockets. What was he supposed to say to that? He had fallen so madly in love with Kendra that he never thought he'd love another woman the same way. And now? To find out she hadn't cut him off all those years ago? He wanted to step right in and start back up where they'd left off. But that was unrealistic. I know. He finally said, frustrated with himself for being so stupid. She folded her arms as if to shield herself from him. We can't have a relationship. Wait a minute. He knew he was not thinking realistically, asking her to come with him, but no relationship at all? Why not? She shook her head and exhaled. You're leaving. The plane goes both directions? She gave him a frank look. Really? When's the next time you're able to come back? February? March? April? He mentally reviewed his schedule and his heart sank. She was right. His schedule was jam-packed for a while. He had his U.S. tour, then he was going to Europe for a tour there. He was out for at least six months. And after that, he wasn't sure he'd be able to come back. 
When he had an album to record, it was long nights in the record studio or at his home, writing and coming up with the music. Maybe you can pencil me in for a visit in another six years, she said, a bitter tone to her voice. Come on, that's not fair, and you know it. He would have made it back sooner had he known the full situation. He probably would never have left. Kendra's sharp gaze softened, and she sighed. You're right. I'm being unfair, but you're being unrealistic. No matter how hard it was going to be, he was not going to walk out of their lives. He had a daughter, for crying out loud. A daughter who knew nothing about him. He wasn't going to let that go. I'm not going to let my daughter grow up without a father. Kendra's mouth opened, but no sound came out. She snapped it closed and tears sprang to her eyes. You want to file for custody? No, who said anything about filing for custody? But geez, Kendra, you had no right to lie to me about her. I know, she whispered and buried her face in her hands. I was so scared and angry at you when you didn't respond to me. I didn't know what to do. The first time someone asked about it, I panicked and lied. Then the lie stuck, and soon everyone around town just accepted it. After she was born, I was terrified someone would call my bluff, but you had a hit song by then, and people had forgotten about us as a couple. She sniffed and wiped at her face. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to keep your daughter from you. After you grew popular, I thought you were better off not knowing. I didn't want to hurt your career. Jacob's phone vibrated in his pocket and he pulled it out. Ten unread messages? Dang, he was in trouble. He scrolled to see what was going on. They were all from his mother. You didn't have the right to make that decision for me, he said while he scrolled through her messages, making sure there wasn't an emergency. I know that now. I'm sorry. He ran a frustrated hand through his hair. My mother is freaking out, wondering where I am. I have to go. He wanted to pull her into his arms, kiss her again. But she stood there, an invisible wall around her. He sighed and hooked his thumbs on his belt loops. Are you okay? She nodded. I'm fine. She looked like someone had stepped on her soul, wounded. He took a step closer to her. Why is it that I don't believe you? She let out a strange laugh. Because fine might be an exaggeration. But I'm not a high schooler anymore. I can take care of myself. You need to go to your mother. I know how she gets. All right. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Kendra nodded, her gaze on the floor. Yeah. See you tomorrow. He hated leaving in the middle of the kind of discussion they were having, but his mother's texts were frantic. He didn't want her to worry. He shot her off a quick text, telling her he was on his way home, and then left Kendra's house. His mind spun as he drove home. So much of what happened was his mother's fault, but how could he bring it up with her? She would be sure to have a breakdown. But he wasn't going to let it go, either. He would just have to find a way to approach the subject in a delicate way. She had to answer for her actions. What she did was wrong, and she had to face it. When he pulled up to her house, his mother was standing on the front porch, her silhouette framed in the doorway, a blanket around her shoulders. He climbed out of his car and she watched as he walked up the sidewalk. She shuffled her feet, which were bare. Thank heavens you're home, she said as he approached, pulling the blanket tighter around herself. Why are you outside, mother? You're going to catch a cold. I was waiting for you. I know, Ma, but you didn't have to wait outside. He gently guided her back inside and shut the door. He sat her down on the couch and pulled another blanket onto her lap. How long have you been out there? I was worried you had gotten in an accident, 
She grabbed his hand, her fingers like ice. It's slippery out there. He enveloped her hands in his and rubbed them, trying to get the circulation going. I'm fine. You didn't have to worry. You took so long. Her voice trailed off. I told you I was taking Kendra and her daughter to dinner. He grabbed her slippers and put them on her feet. I don't know why you want to spend time with them, she mumbled. They are nothing to you. He bit back a reply. He didn't want to argue with her, not when she was in this state. She was obviously having difficulty dealing with life at the moment. He needed to get her warm. Would you like some hot chocolate? His mother smiled. Very much. Okay, just sit tight, I'll get you some. He hurried into the kitchen and grabbed a mug from the cupboard. He microwaved the water and dumped in a packet of hot chocolate mix, stirring it with a spoon. He walked back into the living room. His mother was standing by the end table looking at the photographs. The blanket he'd placed on her lap lay in a heap on the floor by the couch. At least her slippers were still on her feet. Mom, come here. I want you to sit and drink this. She touched one of the frames. You are always such a talented boy. He guided her back to the couch. That's right. Sit down and sip this cocoa. I'll put marshmallows in it for you. Oh, honey, thank you. I'm so cold. I know you are. Worry crept up into his chest. How often did his mother get like this? He'd seen her act in an odd way before, but never anything that might endanger herself. Now he wondered if she shouldn't be living at home alone. I'm glad you're home now. She took a sip of her cocoa and patted his hand. You should stay here. With me. The hairs on the back of his neck stood. Something wasn't right. Was his mother having an episode, or was this whole thing her way of making him stay? Was she manipulating him? He chose his words carefully. I'm here now. Let's put on a Christmas movie. You always like those? She smiled, her fingers curled around her warm mug. Yes, I do. He wasn't exactly sure what was going on, but he put on a movie and let it go. He would have to confront her about what she did to him and Kendra, but not tonight. He needed to figure out just how he was going to approach it. Chapter 10 Kendra poured some Cheerios in a bowl while Arya danced around the kitchen on her tiptoes. She sang a made-up song. The lyrics consisted of one sentence repeated over and over. My wish is going to come true. Kendra tried to play innocent. What wish, honey? My Christmas wish. You know, Mommy, the one I made in the fountain. I think my penny turned into the wish. Can that happen? I want to throw another penny in. Can we show Jake the fountain tonight? Arya stopped talking and stared up at Kendra. Her emotions were stripped and raw from her conversation with Jacob last night. She didn't need to spend more time with him. And yet, she couldn't keep him from Arya. Especially not now. Maybe Jake can take you. Just the two of you. Would you like that? Arya shook her head. No, Mommy. I need you there. Why do you need me there? Because. You're my mommy, she said simply. She picked up her spoon and dug into her cereal. Yes, but Jake is your... She stopped cold. She didn't want to have this conversation with Arya. Not now. It had to happen, but she didn't want to open up that can of worms right before Jacob came to the door to drive Arya to school. Uh, he's your good friend, and good friends can go places together. Yes, but I want you there too, Mommy. She gave her a bit of a distraught look. Maybe she wasn't as comfortable with Jacob as Kendra thought. Okay, sweetie, I'll come too. Arya smiled. 
good. She scooped in another spoonful of cereal and hummed. Kendra went into the bathroom to finish putting on her makeup. Arya seemed so happy now with just the simple promise to go to the fountain. But how happy would she be Christmas morning? She had to find a way to get her daughter to spill it, otherwise she'd be devastated. A knock came on her door and she froze. Oh no, it was later than she thought. Great, now Jacob was here to pick them up and they weren't ready. Again. How many more ways was she going to embarrass herself in front of him? She ran to the front door, but Arya had already let him in. Go finish your breakfast, sweetie. I'm done, Arya called out as she ran to get her coat on. Good, Kendra said under her breath. Then she turned to Jacob. I'm sorry, we're not quite ready yet. I still need to finish up in the bathroom. Take all the time you need. I'm here a little early. He leaned against the door, and she couldn't help but see the country star in him. He really was the perfect man to fit that mold. Ruggedly handsome face, lean but muscular. He had the perfect aura. Confident, yet there was a humility in him as well. She swallowed back the emotions that swelled in her chest. She couldn't let herself fall for him again. That ship had sailed. They both knew it. Thanks. She went back into the bathroom and finished applying her mascara. Five minutes later, she was done and helping Arya zip up her coat. We're going to the fountain tonight, Arya announced as they walked to Jacob's car. You are? Yes, and you're coming with us. Arya beamed at him and Kendra couldn't help but laugh. I think she's inviting you. Jacob grinned. Sounds like a plan. We can go after school. No, we have to wait until after dark. Arya climbed into her booster seat. Then it will be lit up. Oh, I see. Jacob slowly nodded. After dark it is. After they got into the car, Kendra turned to him. I hope that's all right. She was pretty excited about the prospect of taking you to the fountain. It's fine. I've wanted to go with her. Hopefully your mother will be okay with it. Kendra pulled on her seatbelt, not missing the look that flashed over Jacob's face. She'll have to be. What happened last night? She didn't want to pry into his life, but she was too curious not to ask. He shrugged. Mother wanted me home. She got what she wanted. That sounds a little ominous. He pulled out of her driveway onto the gravel road that led to town. I'm just not quite sure what to think of her. My mother has always needed extra attention, but last night when I pulled up, she was on the porch without a coat or shoes, just a blanket around her shoulders. She'd been waiting outside for me. Oh, dear. That wasn't good. Jacob had struggled with his mother when they were in high school. She just thought his mother was odd the kind of person who didn't conform to the norm. It was as if she had her own tune in her head, and that's what she listened to. But this sounded more like dementia. Yes, but I'm not sure if she's as fragile as she comes across. How so? I don't know. Just a feeling I got last night. I'm going to do some digging. That sounds like you're going to go looking for buried bodies in the backyard. Jacob chuckled. Something like that. They dropped Aria off at school. The car became silent as Jacob drove to the dollar store. Kendra wondered if it would always be like this between them. Distant. Awkward. Part of her wanted him to go back to Nashville so she could go back to the way her life was before. But deep in her heart, she knew it would never be that way again. Not now that Jacob knew about Aria. He was going to want to be a part of her life. She should be happy. Some women would give anything for a father who wanted to be involved in their children's lives. But Kendra couldn't muster up the enthusiasm. Not when seeing Jacob tore her apart. About last night. Jacob looked at her and her mouth grew full of cotton. 
Why was he so good looking? She didn't need that right now. Let's not talk about it. He swallowed and scanned the road. I just wanted you to know I meant everything I said. Kendra's throat constricted and she blinked back emotion. He may have meant what he said, but she knew the reality. He would go back to being a huge country star once this visit was over, and she would go back to crying as she listened to his songs late at night in the privacy of her room. He stopped the car at the front entrance to the dollar store. I'll see you tonight. She stepped out onto the frozen parking lot. Guilt washed over her, and she leaned down before closing the passenger door. Thank you for being my taxi service. I probably don't deserve it. He gave her a funny look. I don't mind. She smiled at him, then shut the door. The fact that he didn't mind was exactly what bothered her. Jacob was kind, just out of the goodness of his heart. That's how he was. And she felt guilty for wanting to shove him out of her life. But the pain of watching him leave her behind a second time was not something she was looking forward to. Chapter 11 Jacob pulled down another shoebox from the top shelf of his mother's closet. She was at the bookstore working, so he had a few hours alone. But so far, he hadn't found anything interesting. He opened the lid of the shoebox. More doilies. How many doilies does a person need? He pulled the first few up to make sure there were no letters hidden below, and then replaced the lid and shoved it back. He felt along the dark part of the shelf where he couldn't quite see, to look for anything hidden in the back. But all his fingers came in contact with was an air vent. It made a noise when he bumped it, like it was loose. A screw fell, rolled off the shelf, and disappeared into the darkness of the closet floor. Great. How was he supposed to find that? He bent down and felt around the carpet. No sign of it. He pulled out his cell phone and turned on the light. Then he got down on his hands and knees until he saw it propped up against one of the baseboards. He picked it up and examined it. The screw looked like it had been painted over years ago. But then, all the paint had been scraped off the slots in the head as if someone had been loosening that screw. Jacob stood, puzzling over this. It seemed so odd to suspect his mother was hiding something in the vent. Wasn't that something they only did in the movies? Still, he was curious enough to drag the step stool into the closet and climb up so he could have a better look. The vent must have only had one screw because none of the others were there. He tugged on the metal and the vent came loose. He removed it, then raised his cell phone light to peer into the hole. He was so surprised to find a stack of letters that he stepped back and the step stool tilted. His foot slipped off the edge and he fell backwards, hitting his head on the wall. It made a terrible racket, and he was glad he'd waited until his mother was at work or she surely would be racing up the steps. He climbed back up and grabbed the letters, then replaced the vent. He twisted the screw back in, but didn't tighten it. He was too interested in the letters to care. He exited the closet and walked into his bedroom, sat at his desk, and turned on his lamp. The letters looked far too old to be the ones Kendra wrote to him. Examining the name and address, he confirmed it. They were written to June Harrington, his mother's maiden name, and were from someone named Michael Evans. A stab of guilt shot through him before he took out the first one. He probably shouldn't be violating his mother's privacy, but he was insanely curious. He'd wanted to find the letters Kendra wrote to him. These were a surprise. He pulled the first one out and read it. Dear June, I settled into my dormitory today. I miss you already. The campus is too large. I feel like I don't belong here. Tomorrow I have to register for my classes. 
I feel like this is a prison more than a college. I wish I were still in Highland Falls with you. I know it's a whole year away, but maybe after you graduate, you can move to California so we can be closer. I know my father wouldn't approve, but he doesn't rule my life. Well, maybe at the moment he does. But if you move out here, he won't have any say. We could be together without him trying to destroy us. I miss you. I'll write more tomorrow. All my love, Michael. A gasp sounded behind him and he whirled around. What are you doing? His mother asked, her hand at her throat. What are those? Guilt surged in him, but he shoved it down. She was the one who had lied to him. This was her fault. If she hadn't hidden Kendra's letters, he never would have found these. Who's Michael Evans? Those are private. Her hand shot out and she snatched the letters from his fingers. Who is he, mother? How many did you read? Just one. How did you find these? Were you going through my things? Her eyes widened as she pressed the letters to her chest. Searching my closet? Jacob stood and exhaled a frustrated breath. I'm sorry. I was looking for the letters Kendra wrote to me. The letters you never sent. His mother's face drained of color, and she took several steps back. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. We both know you withheld those letters from me. She touched her forehead and closed her eyes. I don't feel so well. I think I feel a headache coming on. I need my medicine. Jacob didn't want to act like a jerk to her, but he also wanted answers. Sit down, mother. I'll get your medicine. He pushed his chair to her and guided her into it. But we're not done talking about this. His mother moaned and put her hand to her head. He walked into her bathroom and opened the medicine cabinet. Her pills weren't there. Mother, where is your medicine? Downstairs, in the kitchen. He sprinted down the stairs and located the pills. He brought up a glass of water and her medicine. When he entered his bedroom, she was still in the chair, but the letters she had been clutching to her chest were gone. Thank you, dear, she said, taking the glass. Where did you put those letters? What letters? He frowned. What kind of game was his mother playing? Of course she knew what letters he was talking about. She'd hid them after she sent him down the stairs. Mother, Michael Evans, who is he? Did you date him before my father? She shook out two pills into her hand. I don't know what you're talking about. He folded his arms across his chest. Then I'm going to tear this house apart and find the letters again. I'm going to read every single one of them to find the answers to my questions. His mother paled. You can't do that! Yes, I can. All I want to know is who Michael Evans was. You're making it into something bigger than it has to be. I'm so hot. Can't we talk about this another time? Mother. She huffed, then popped her pills into her mouth, washing them down with a drink of water. She set the glass on the desk with a thunk. Fine. Michael and I dated before I met your father. Jacob waited for more, but when his mother didn't say anything else, he grew impatient. And? And nothing. He went off to school and wrote me some letters. I started dating your father, and life took us in different directions. Why did you hide his letters in the vent? She touched the back of her hair as if it had become unruly as they spoke. Because I didn't want anyone to read them. They're private. Jacob shifted his weight. But why keep them all this time, stored away in a secret place? What do they contain that's so important? His mother pinched her lips together. She turned away from him. Nothing? Then, after a moment, when he didn't say anything else, she said, It's complicated. 
Jacob let out a breath and sat down on his bed. His mother obviously held feelings for this man, even after she met and married his father. But why had she never mentioned him, even after his father left? He could see his mother was upset, but he didn't want to dance around any of this. I know it's probably none of my business, but I'd like to know more about who this man was. I'm not a child anymore. I can handle it. She picked at a piece of lint from her sweater. I suppose I can tell you. She paused and a contemplative look crossed her face. Michael and I knew each other from high school, but we were forbidden to date. Forbidden? Why? His mother stared out the window. The Evans family were prominent in town. They owned the country club. They were the sort of people who had old money, and with it, they made new money. Michael was their only son. We were in a study group together. I often went to his house after school, but his mother didn't like me. She saw we were growing closer and told Michael not to bring me home anymore. She closed her eyes. But we were in love, and we met secretly. I see. After he graduated, he was forced to go to Stanford. It was far away and prestigious. His mother thought that he would forget about me. His mother blinked. He wrote me for a while, but eventually his mother got her wish. Her gaze hardened. He found someone else. But you never got over him. It was a long time ago, she said, her voice low. Yes, I suppose it was. Jacob put his hands on his knees. He had to transition the conversation. Is this what happened with me and Kendra? His mother's gaze snapped up to meet his. What are you talking about? I know about the letters. I know you took a call from Kendra and didn't relay the message to me. He rubbed the back of his neck, a nervous habit of his. Were you trying to break us up? A long stretch of silence filled the room before his mother responded. I was only doing what was best for you. How can you say that? Especially after what happened with Michael. That was completely different. His mother sighed. Michael ended up moving to New York and marrying a socialite. I would have hated living in New York. And even though things didn't work out with your father, I'm glad things ended up the way they did. I wouldn't have you otherwise. She gave him a small smile. I hope you can see how staying here and being tied to a baby would have changed your life dramatically. Jacob stood, sucking in a breath, anger rising in his stomach. So you knew she was pregnant with my child? And you still kept us apart? His mother blanched. She twisted her hands around and around. Look at your success. You wouldn't have any of it had you stayed. Jacob clenched his fists, his nostrils flaring. He needed to leave before he said something to his mother he'd regret. I have to go. He brushed past her, but she grabbed onto his wrist, stopping him. You were meant to be a star. She gave him a meaningful look before she let go. He grabbed his coat on the way out of the house. He had to get away, go somewhere to cool down. He was too upset and didn't want to yell at his mother. Chapter 12 Lively holiday music played over the speakers as Kendra stocked the candy shelf. It was hard keeping up with the demand, especially with only five days left until Christmas. Everyone was last-minute shopping. Janet, another employee, walked by and then stopped short, her bracelets clanging together. Ooh, is that who I think it is coming in? Kendra looked up as the bell to the door sounded. Jacob? 
She glanced at the clock. He was 30 minutes early. What was he doing here? Janet elbowed her. He's here for you, isn't he? Kendra shrugged. I don't know. She left her stacks of candy and approached him. Everything okay? He exhaled and ran a hand through his hair. From the looks of it, he'd been doing that a lot today. Not really. Her heart jumped. What's wrong? Nothing. I mean, nothing serious. I'm just figuring out my mother isn't who I thought she was. A woman walked up to them. Excuse me, do you carry any Christmas tree skirts? Yes, aisle five. I can show you. Kendra gave Jacob a sympathetic look before leaving to show the woman where she could find what she was looking for. After helping another person find something, she came back to her spot, restocking the Christmas candy. Jacob joined her. Sorry to bother you while you're working. I don't mind, as long as you don't care if I have to run and help a customer. Not at all. So, do you want to talk about what happened? Kendra picked up another stack of candy cane boxes and shoved them on the shelf. Jacob's shoulders sank. She all but admitted to what she did. And she's not sorry. She thinks what she did was for my own good. Kendra paused and bit her lower lip. She didn't dare tell him what she was thinking, because she could already see it would be a bad idea, but she saw his mother's point. He was who he was today because of what his mother did. Even though she had begged for him to come home, he was a superstar. And he never would have been had he stayed behind with her. I always thought she was weak, needed special attention. But now I just don't know. I think she's been manipulating me. The back door opened and Shelley came in a stack of boxes in her arms. Her black hair was pulled up into a severe bun and she wore the same sensible shoes Kendra had always seen her in. When she saw Jacob, she narrowed her eyes. We don't allow personal visits while you're on the clock. Mortified, Kendra's face heated like a red balloon. I'm sorry, she whispered. I was just buying some Christmas candy. Jacob stepped back to look at the shelf. I need some bacon-flavored candy canes. Do you have any? Bacon? Shelley scoffed. We don't have anything like that. Kendra hid a smile. What's wrong with peppermint? Gives me gas. A laugh sounded from the next aisle, giving Janet away. Shelley didn't seem to find it amusing, however. She set the boxes down next to Kendra. I mean it. No boyfriends, or you're fired. Kendra stammered. He's not my boyfriend. I don't care. He's here talking to you, and you're distracted from your job. Shelley scowled and walked toward the back room. Come back when her shift is done. Will do, Jacob said, backing toward the door. After Shelley disappeared in the back, he said, See you in a few minutes. Okay. He ducked out and Kendra went back to shoving boxes onto the shelf. She definitely didn't need to get fired right before Christmas. Janet came around the corner. Ignore Shelly. She's all talk. Besides, it might be worth it to get fired if you get to spend more time with that hunk. Is he really that good looking? Oh, he is that good looking. And his voice is like butter. Smooth and creamy. The door dinged again and both of them swiveled to look, but it was just an elderly gentleman. He grabbed a cart and headed down the toy aisle. Janet grinned at her. Are you guys back together then? Oh no, heavens no. She knew better than to go down that road again. He's just been my taxi service until my car gets fixed. Uh-huh. Janet raised one eyebrow. Seriously, there's nothing going on between us. Then why are you blushing? Kendra crouched down to open one of the boxes Shelley had brought out. I'm not. You so totally are. Did he kiss you? 
Heat flamed up Kendra's neck, and she was sure her face was now seven shades of red. Girl, you're holding out on me. He kissed you and you didn't tell me? Janet placed her hands on her hips. I want the details. There are no details, Kendra hissed. We were talking. It happened. But it can't happen again because we can't happen again. Why not? I always thought you two were meant to be together. Janet curled a strand of her pixie-cut hair behind her ear. I mean, you have a daughter and everything. Kendra jerked her head up. She's not- Oh, hush. No one believes that stupid story. Janet scoffed. She looks just like him. Seriously? Kendra's mouth dried up. You knew this whole time? Uh, yeah. Janet shrugged. I just figured it was your business. Kendra sat down on the floor next to the open box, feeling like a deflated life raft. Well, I don't know what to say. Don't freak out. It's okay. You're doing the best you know how. I understand that. Janet motioned toward the door. But dang, girl, he's hot and rich. And you're not trying to get back together with him? Kendra didn't know how to answer her. How could she tell Janet of the many nights she'd cried herself to sleep? How loving Jacob had led to such heartache. She wasn't ready to open herself back up to that. She was stronger now. She can handle things on her own. She didn't need Jacob back in her life, ripping open the pain of the past. She sighed. No, it just wouldn't work. Janet placed her hand on Kendra's shoulder. Then you must follow your heart. That was easier said than done. Kendra's heart disagreed with her head in this matter. Chapter 13 Jacob sat silent as he drove Kendra to pick up Arya. His mother's words were flying around in his mind. You were meant to be a star. Was that true? Was he meant to be on stage? He had to admit he did love it. Everything about it. He loved writing the songs, performing in front of thousands of fans. The lights, the cheers, he thrived on it. Kendra hopped out of his car and went to get Arya. When they came out of her mother's home, Arya scanned the street until her gaze connected with his. She smiled wide and came running to the car. Jake, we got to make our own Play-Doh today. She held a baggie in her hand, a small mound of white clay in it. Really? That's so cool. I know, and Ellie said I could eat it, but it tasted gross, so I don't believe her anymore. Arya climbed into her seat, and Kendra snapped in the seatbelt. You don't believe Ellie anymore? She said, her voice unusually high. Nope. Kendra climbed into the front seat. I see. She placed a finger on her lips. Then maybe Ellie was wrong when she said you can't tell your secret Christmas wish. Maybe. Arya stretched out the word like she didn't really believe it. But I'm still not telling, just to be safe. Jacob could feel Kendra's frustration even from across the car. He put it into drive and tried to think of a way to help Kendra out. Maybe I can guess your secret Christmas wish. Arya giggled. No, you can't do that. You don't think I could guess? He turned onto the highway. Arya shook her head, but her grin said she wanted him to guess anyway. I bet you I can. Jacob glanced at her in the rearview mirror. I think you wished for a stuffed monkey. Arya's giggles cascaded down his spine. <laughs> no, it wasn't a monkey. No? Was it a stuffed animal at all? She shook her head. No. Kendra's eyes widened. She mouthed the word, thank you. Oh, 
Okay, then. Was it a rocket launcher? No, Arya said as she continued to shake her head. Not that. Really? You look like you'd enjoy a good rocket launcher. She laughed. I don't even know what that is. You don't? Oh my, well then it's not that, is it? No. Maybe it's a puzzle. He slapped the dashboard. I uh, know, a puzzle of a bunny. Nope, it's not even a puzzle at all. Hmm, not a puzzle. Then maybe it's a record player. Arya made a face. What's a record player? Jacob shook his head. Never mind. Is it candy? No, it's not even anything to eat. You're a bad guesser. What? He made an exaggerated gasp. Aria laughed. A bad guesser? Yes, you haven't even gotten close. She folded her arms. Well, let me see if I can try to get closer. Does it have batteries? Aria shook her head slowly. No, and you can't ask any more questions. Why not? She pointed. Because we're home, silly. Jacob shrugged and shot a look at Kendra. I tried, he whispered. I know you did. Thanks. That helped a little. She patted his knee. He turned into their driveway and crunched on the snow until he came to a stop by their house. Well, here's our last stop. All passengers must get out. Aria clapped her hands. Yes, get out, Jake. Kendra turned to her daughter. We're the ones getting out, love. Jake has to leave. No! Arya cried out. I want Jake to stay. She blinked, and in a split second, Arya went from being fine to large, fat tears rolling down her cheeks. I don't have to leave, he said, his heart breaking. I can come in. He looked at Kendra. If your mother doesn't mind. She nodded. That's fine. He shut the engine off and got out of the car. Aria happily ran to him and he picked her up. Now I can keep guessing. Aria laughed and put her mittens on his cheeks. No, you'll never guess it. Are you sure? I think I'm just out of practice with my guesses. Maybe if you and I practice some more, I'll get better at it. He stepped up the stairs and followed Kendra inside. Arya gave him a skeptical look. Maybe. She wiggled out of his grasp and he set her down. Can I watch Dora? She asked as she hung her coat on the hook. Let's do something else. You can have some screen time later. Kendra opened a cabinet and pulled out a box. Why don't you teach Jake how to play the marble game? Yes! Arya grabbed the box from her mother and ran to the coffee table. Come on, Jake, I'll show you how to play. He chuckled at her enthusiasm as he took off his coat. He sat down on the couch and rubbed his hands together. Okay, show me. Kendra motioned to the kitchen. I was going to make a hamburger casserole for dinner. Arya's mouth popped open. Can we have hot dogs, please? No, we had hot dogs the other night. Then pancakes. Arya clasped her hands together, and Jacob had a hard time not picking her up and hugging the stuffing out of her. Kendra frowned. I need to cook this hamburger meat or it will go bad. You can put it in the freezer, Mommy. Kendra laughed and shook her head. You are too smart for your own good. Arya giggled. Can we have pancakes? Kendra's gaze landed on him. Do you object to breakfast for dinner? Me? He shook his head. Never. I'd eat pancakes any time. Yay! Aria clapped her hands. Can I have one with a chocolate chip smile? The look on Aria's face was pure bliss. Kendra rolled her eyes, but her lips held a smile. All right. You know, you're showing Jake how healthy we are around here. Aria laughed, even though she probably didn't know what her mother meant. Jacob chuckled, too. It's okay. I won't judge your eating habits. You should see what I eat when I'm on tour. 
Kendra stiffened at the mention of a tour. She nodded and left the room. Ouch. Got the cold shoulder. Maybe he shouldn't have brought that up. He filed that away for later. Arya opened the box and pulled out a tube. Set it up like this. She fit the tube in the base. Then she pulled out a Ziploc bag of marbles. These go in here, but not until later. Okay. She peered into the box and pulled out a handful of colored sticks. They looked like pickup sticks, but she started fitting them into the holes on the tube. As the sticks went in, they crossed with each other, making a barrier. Jacob started to see how this game was played. He helped Arya set it up, then dumped in the marbles. Arya bounced on her tiptoes. This is the best part. Now you take out the sticks. But if I take out the sticks, the marbles will fall. Arya laughed and slapped the table. No, we take the sticks out one at a time, like this. She tugged on one of the sticks until it slid out. The marbles shifted inside the clear tube. See, they only fall after you pull out a lot of sticks. He smiled at her. I see. You go now, pull one out. If all the marbles fall, you lose. They took turns pulling out sticks and Arya grew more excited as the marbles shifted and got closer to falling out. When they finally fell, she squealed and clapped. Let's play again. Jacob played the game with Arya twice before he stood and brushed off his knees. I better go see if your mother needs any help. Okay. Arya began to set up the game again, content to play by herself. He walked into the kitchen, the smell making his stomach rumble. Kendra was at the stove, pouring batter on a frying pan. Can I help? He asked. She turned and smiled at him. She'd pulled her hair up in a messy ponytail, strands falling to frame her heart-shaped face. Her cheeks seemed to glow. Man, was she even more beautiful today? It didn't seem possible. She took his breath away. Yes, can you get out the syrup from the cupboard and heat it in the microwave? It took him a moment to regain his composure. Sure. She pointed to the cupboard, and he rummaged through it until he found the bottle of syrup. One minute should do it, she said. He nodded and did as she said. Anything else? Want to get the whipped cream out of the refrigerator? Aria likes to eat her chocolate chip pancakes with that instead of syrup. Whipped cream on pancakes? I'm in. He opened the door and found the can of Ready Whip. He grabbed it and turned to her. Remember when we raided your mother's kitchen and ate all her whipped cream? She was so disgusted. She laughed. I'm sure we're not the only teenagers who ate Ready Whip right out of the can. He uncapped it, feeling playful. Here, open your mouth. She made a face. No way! Come on, relive your teen years. Open up. It tastes better straight from the can. He stepped closer to her. She laughed. Stop fooling around. I'm going to burn this pancake. He motioned. Flip it, then open your mouth. You always were stubborn. She flipped the pancake, then shot him a look. Come closer to me with that can and I'll belt you. You will not. You know you want some. He opened his mouth and shot a little whipped cream in. Mmm, it's good. Aria came in the kitchen. What are you doing? Here, open your mouth. Kendra's eyes widened. You will not teach my daughter how to do that. He would have paused had Kendra not been half laughing when she said it. I will too. Arya obediently opened her mouth and Jacob shot a squirt of whipped cream in. Arya giggled and ate the cream. She rubbed her tummy. Yum! See? Arya knows it's good. Kendra blew out a breath. You two are impossible. Let's get Mommy to open her mouth. She should try too, don't you think? Arya jumped up and down. Yes, Mommy, try it. I'm cooking, Kendra said. But she was smiling, fighting back giggles. Come on, time to give in. 
Jacob put his arm around her waist and pulled her to him. The can of whipped cream raised high. Okay, fine. Kendra opened her mouth and looked up. Jacob squirted a dollop of cream on her nose. Kendra gasped and Arya squealed. Mommy, it's on your nose. Give me that, Kendra said, squirming to get the can from him while wiping at her nose. Jacob was too busy laughing to fight her very hard. She grabbed the can and squirted him in the face. Since the can wasn't upside down, all that came out were splatters, but that didn't matter to Arya. She laughed and screamed, Do it again! Jacob wiped his hand over his face and wrestled the can away from Kendra. You're getting it now. Kendra squealed and tried to wiggle out of his grasp, but he held on. I cry mercy, she said, laughing. Okay, I won't do anything. Open up, I'll put some in your mouth, I swear this time. He could see the indecision on her face as she tried to figure out if he was lying or not. Finally, she stopped squirming and opened her mouth. He did as he said he would, and she smiled as she swallowed. You're right, that tastes better from the can. He stared into her eyes, deep pools of brown with little flecks of gold. He could feel his heart thumping wildly in his chest. Her lips were slightly parted, and all he wanted to do right now was kiss her. But he knew she'd freak if he did, so he refrained. You've got a little something, she said, holding back a smile and pointing to his face. Yeah, so do you. Where? On impulse, he leaned down and licked the whipped cream off her nose. Arya dissolved in a fit of giggles. He licked you, mommy! She stared up at him, her eyes wide. I can't believe you did that. I'm not going to apologize. A burning smell hit his nose and he jumped back from her. Oh, the pancakes. Kendra gasped and ran to the stovetop. She grabbed the spatula and the pan. This one's burned. He wrapped his arms around her from behind. Oh, well, I'm still not going to apologize. She tossed the pancake in the trash and rolled her eyes at him. You should probably get out of the kitchen if you ever want to eat. He nuzzled her neck. I don't mind the weight. She pushed him away. Get out! He would have been offended if she hadn't said it with a gigantic smile on her face. Chapter 14 Kendra stood in the kitchen, her heart doing a crazy samba dance in her chest. She leaned against the counter and tried to get her emotions in check. She hadn't flirted like that since she and Jacob had been in high school. It had felt wonderful. But she wasn't a schoolgirl anymore. She had Aria to think about. She had to be the grown-up here and act like it. Still, her fingers trembled and her skin tingled. It felt good to be in Jacob's arms. He was funny, and it was wonderful to be around him. He made the dark clouds go away. And how amazing he'd been, getting information out of Arya about her Christmas wish. She didn't think he could do it, but if he kept it up, she believed he could get it out of her by the end of the day. And how sweet of him to even care about something so small. It was a tiny thing, but it meant so much to her. She wanted to give her little girl her heart's desire. And to have Jacob help her with that meant the world. He really was a kind man. The thought worked its way around her head as she poured another pool of batter into the pan. She could see herself falling back in love with Jacob. She blinked as she let that sink in. Fall back in love? Had she ever fallen out of love with Jacob? The pancake sizzled after she flipped it. The memory of all those nights alone in her room as she listened to his songs came to her. She thought about the way his music affected her, like 
It was a part of her that was ripped out six years ago. Maybe she never had gotten over Jacob. She thought she was dealing with it, leaving it all behind her. But maybe she was just as hurt as the day she'd found out he'd left Highland Falls. And now she had to face those feelings. Arya came running into the room. Jacob's going to sing a song for us. Come on, Mommy, sing with him. I have to finish cooking the pancakes, sweetheart. I can't. Arya's shoulders slumped. Uh, okay. She left the kitchen, but she looked so dejected. Kendra felt bad for rejecting her idea. Maybe she could get Jacob to sing again later after they went to the fountain. Arya sure loved it when he sang. She couldn't blame her daughter. She used to love it, too. She hadn't realized Jacob had his guitar with him until she heard him start to strum it. Her heart leapt and she sucked in a breath. She hadn't heard him play his guitar since that night at the campfire. He'd sung to her, then they'd roasted marshmallows. He was playing the opening notes to the song he'd been humming yesterday. Then he started to sing. And the words made her knees weak. She walked in the room and I caught my breath. I hadn't seen her in so long. I took her hand and she took my heart. Or maybe she had never let it go. She was everything in the world to me. And now I know. Now I see. I need her in my life. She gives me breath. Brings me light. She is my day and is my night. I don't know why I ever let her go. I'll never let her go. Again. Kendra didn't realize she had tears streaming down her face until she saw one fall and hit the counter. She grabbed a napkin and dabbed at her face. His voice. Those lyrics. Was he singing about her? Sometimes she imagined his songs were about her when she was feeling vulnerable when she needed to cling to the idea that Jacob was still in love with her, even from far away. Was she being desperate, thinking he had written these lyrics for her? Or was it just a song? No matter what it was, she couldn't let it dissolve her into a blubbering idiot. She wiped her tears away and steeled herself. Even if Jacob did want to pursue a relationship, how would that even work? He couldn't move to Highland Falls to date her, and she couldn't follow him around like a groupie. No matter how she placed the pieces, she and Jacob didn't fit together anymore. She had to face that fact. It wasn't meant to be. She listened to Jacob sing as she finished making the pancakes. He sang a couple of his songs, then began singing, Home is Love. Arya squealed when she heard the first few notes. She loved that song. Kendra heard her singing with him, and her heart melted. Maybe she was biased, but she thought her daughter was talented. Kendra set the table and put the pancakes on a plate. She got out three glasses and filled them with milk. After Jacob ended the song, she poked her head into the other room, forcing herself to look unaffected. Time to eat! Yay! Arya ran to the table, and Jacob followed after her. Jacob entered the kitchen, and they came face to face, neither one of them saying anything. Her pulse jumped. He gave her a shy smile. Why couldn't she think of something to say? You brought your guitar, she finally blurted, and then cringed. That was stupid. Her mind had blanked, especially after listening to his new song. Yeah, he said, looking at her in that way only Jacob could, his eyes half-hooded. She knew he was feeling her out, trying to figure out what she was thinking. You sounded good, she said as she passed him the plate of pancakes. Thanks. He stabbed one and put it on his plate, then did the same for Aria. Oh, I forgot the chocolate chips. Kendra jumped up her chair making a terrible scraping sound on the linoleum. 
Her face flushed as she grabbed them from the cupboard, but not from embarrassment for forgetting them. She was suddenly self-conscious with Jacob looking at her. Here you go, she said as she opened the container and handed it to Aria. Can you make this smile, Mommy? Sure. She took her daughter's plate and began putting the chocolate chips on the pancake. Very cute. Will you do that to mine, too? Jacob winked at her. A warmth washed through her. You hush. No, I'm serious. I want to try a smiley face pancake. He pushed his plate toward her. They're good, Aria said. Mommy makes them the best. Kendra added the whipped cream nose to Aria's face, then handed it back to her. Here you go. Looks delicious, Jacob said as Kendra dropped chocolate chips onto his pancake. Aria folded her pancake in half like a taco and picked it up. See? Eat it like this. Oh, that's a great way. You're smart. Aria beamed. Kendra handed him back his plate. Enjoy. He picked up his pancake like Aria and bit into it. Yum. This is good. You're right, kiddo. Your mom makes them the best. They ate in silence for a few moments before Aria piped up. Did you hear Jake's song, Mommy? Kendra sucked in a breath, but unfortunately she had food in her mouth and it started a coughing attack. She picked up her glass of milk and gulped down the cool liquid. Jacob patted her back. You okay? She nodded. She didn't want to speak. She was too humiliated. I like Jake's song. He said it will be on the radio. Aria happily munched on her pancake taco. Kendra's gaze snapped to his. He was looking at her expectantly, but she didn't know what to say to him. What did he want her to say? She dropped her gaze. It was good, was all she could think of to say. I've been working on it for a while now. You have? She stared at him. Maybe it wasn't about her then. Maybe it was about some other woman in his life. Why did that twist like a knife in her chest? Yeah, the tune, anyway. The lyrics didn't come to me until recently. His eyes penetrated through her. Her face heated. Oh. You know, I think I want to add smiley face pancakes to my list of foods I have on hand when I'm on tour. Do you know anyone who could travel with me and make them for me for breakfast? Aria laughed. You're silly. No one makes them like mommy. Jacob shrugged, not taking his eyes off Kendra. Well then, too bad. Kendra's heart pounded and her hands grew sweaty. She had to get away from Jacob. He was too smooth, too good looking. She was going to fall hard and then be devastated when he left her cold and alone. She'd been down that road before. It was all too familiar and she wasn't going down again. Chapter 15 Jacob had taken a chance singing his song to Aria. He knew he was pushing things, but he couldn't help it. He had made a mistake six years ago. When Kendra hadn't answered his calls, he should have hopped on a plane and come back. He should have made her speak to him face to face. He'd always regretted letting things die the way he did. And now, sitting next to her, he felt he had been given a do-over, a second chance, and he wasn't going to let her go another time. Things in his life were complicated, that was true, but he could make it work. He had to. Kendra was his soulmate, and he had to have her back. You should see my tour bus. It has three bedrooms, a full bath, and even a kitchen. Kendra reached for her milk but missed and knocked it over. Milk spilled over the tabletop, skittering over the formica in a mad frenzy and then dripping onto his lap. Oh! She jumped up and grabbed a kitchen towel. Sorry! 
She sopped up the mess from the table, then handed him a paper towel roll. I don't know what's wrong with me. He grabbed her wrist and looked into her eyes. Nothing. You're perfect. He had hoped to get a smile out of her, but she just turned from him. A blank look on her face. He inwardly cringed. He was coming on too strong again. He needed to back off. Aria hopped down from her chair. I'm done. Can I go play? Take your plate to the sink, then wash your hands. Okay. Aria did as she was told. Jacob dabbed at his jeans with a paper towel. He hadn't gotten it too bad. Kendra finished mopping up the mess on the table and rinsed out the towel. She motioned to him. Are you finished? He nodded and stood. Yeah, thanks for dinner. You make great pancakes. Her cheeks turned pink. They're from a mix. Well, you mix them well. He grabbed his plate, stacked it on hers, and brought them to the sink. He stood close behind her. His instinct was to get even closer. Touch her. Kiss her. He craved it. But she tensed, and he took a step back. It's almost dark, she said as she turned on the faucet to rinse the dishes. Yes. Arya will be glad. She can't wait to show you the fountain. She doesn't realize you grew up here. He chuckled. She's a cutie. He hesitated, then put his hand on her shoulder. You've done a great job with her. She turned to him. He couldn't quite read her expression. It hasn't been easy. Before he could decipher what she meant, she brushed past him and into the other room. He sighed and rubbed his temples. He didn't know what else to do. He only had five days before Christmas. Then he had to leave. And he wanted Kendra and Arya to come with him. Jake! Arya came running into the kitchen. Look, it's dark outside now. We can go make a wish. Jacob picked up his daughter, a surge of emotion rushing through him. She was so big. He'd missed so much of her childhood. He cradled her to his chest. Yes, we can, he managed to say. I know just what I'm going to wish for. Do you? He nodded, his throat closing. I do. That's good. Kendra appeared in the doorway, but she stopped when she saw Arya in his arms. She leaned against the door jamb. I have a special wish. Her eyes widened. I do too. I know you do. He touched the tip of her nose and she smiled. We both have special wishes, don't we? Arya nodded. And then inspiration struck him. Mine isn't a present you can put under the tree, though. Arya's mouth popped open. Neither is mine, she whispered. Jackpot. He was going to get it out of her. Really? That's so cool. We both have wishes that can't be wrapped. Arya nodded again. He lowered his voice. Do you want to do something fun with me? What? She whispered. Do you want to exchange wishes? What does that mean? He smiled at her childlike innocence. It means trade. She shook her head. No, I want to keep mine. Kendra smiled and put her hand over her mouth. No, he said, unable to keep the smile out of his voice. You don't have to give yours away. I just mean we share our wishes with each other. I'll share mine with you, and you can share yours with me. It's a special exchange, just the two of us. For a moment, he wasn't sure that would work because Arya gave him a skeptical look. But then she nodded. Okay, we can change them. Jacob glanced at Kendra, who stood there grinning, her eyes wide. She gave him a thumbs up. He turned back to Arya. Great, let's exchange them tonight when I tuck you in bed, okay? She placed her hand on his cheek. Okay, 
Can you sing to me, too? Yes, sweetheart. I'll sing you to sleep. Arya threw her arms around his neck and kissed his cheek. He thought he was going to melt into a puddle of goo right there on the kitchen floor. Oh, thank you! He hugged her to him, suddenly wanting to capture this moment in his heart. She was his little girl. He was a daddy. Tears sprang to his eyes. He owed her so much. Let's go make our wishes now, Arya called out after wiggling out of his grasp. He set her down. Sure, let's go. Kendra turned, but not before he saw her wipe her cheek. Get your coat on, she said. Okay, Mommy. With Arya out of the room, Jacob wanted to go to Kendra to pull her into his arms, but he refrained. Do we need to bring anything else besides pennies? Nope. He rocked back on his heels. All right, then. I'm ready. It didn't take long to drive to the downtown square. There was an unusually high number of people bustling about for a Tuesday evening. With Christmas just five days away, the excitement of the holidays was in the air. A long line of children with parents stretched down the street, and Jacob picked Aria up and pointed to the tiny house decorated with candy canes and fake snow. Look, Santa's in there. Do you want to go see him? She thought about it for a minute. After we make our wishes. Okay, Squirt. Aria giggled. Why did you call me that? I don't know, just seemed to fit. You're funny. Aria wiggled down and he set her on the sidewalk. Come on, let's go. She grabbed his hand and tugged him toward the center of the square. They made their way through the crowds of people to the fountain. Aria held out her hand. Can I have my penny now? Sure. Jacob dug into his pocket and pulled out three pennies. One for you? He handed it to Aria. And one for you? He held one out for Kendra. I don't need one, Kendra said, dismissing him with a wave of her hand. Come on, Mommy, make a wish. Then you and Jake can change them. Jacob chuckled. Come on, Kendra. You know you want to. Give in to peer pressure. Kendra rolled her eyes, but she took the penny from him. Arya clapped her hands, then she held her penny super close to her eyes and concentrated on it. Is that how you make a wish? Jacob asked, crouching down and mimicking her. Yes, you have to think of your wish. You have to do it super hard. Arya closed her eyes and pursed her lips, clenching her penny so hard it looked like she was shaking. Then suddenly she opened her eyes and flung the penny into the water. There, I did it! Jacob held back a laugh. She was too adorable for words. He closed his eyes, screwed up his lips, and concentrated. He wasn't about to lose this opportunity. So he said in his mind, I wish I could have back everything I've lost, then tossed his penny in. Me too. Mommy, your turn. Kendra took a step closer to the fountain. At first, he worried she'd just toss her penny in, but she played along, closing her eyes and making her wish. Done, she said after her penny sunk to the bottom of the lighted pool of water. Yay! Arya danced around the fountain. All our pennies turned into our wishes! She stopped and looked up at Jacob. That's how you know your wish will come true. Oh, really? Yes. She grabbed his hand. Now we can see Santa. He turned to Kendra. I guess it's Santa time. At least the line is a little shorter now, Kendra said. I love how you always look on the bright side. She smiled at him. They walked down the sidewalk and joined the line. Arya stood nicely, humming a song as they waited. He nudged Kendra. She loves music, doesn't she? Kendra nodded and folded her arms. Yes, 
There's a lot of you in her. He hadn't expected her to admit that, and his heart warmed. Really? Yes. Even as a baby, her favorite thing was music. If I sang to her, she'd stop and listen quietly. I could always calm her down by singing or turning on the radio. He imagined what it would have been like to hold her as a baby. To rock her to sleep, snuggling in his arms. His throat tightened. I missed so much. Kendra dropped her gaze. I have baby pictures and videos. She peered up at him. If you'd like to see them. The thought thrilled him. I would. Very much. Kendra swallowed and brushed her hair over her shoulder. She shifted her weight. I... When she didn't finish, he looked into her eyes. You what? I should have tried harder to contact you. She picked at her fingernail. I'm sorry. He probably should be angry at her. But for some reason, he wasn't. He couldn't imagine what it was like being pregnant and alone, thinking the man you loved had gone off and left you. He had no room in his heart for anger. He only felt love for her. He reached out and put his arm around her shoulders. It's okay. She shook her head. I don't think it is. I think I messed up. I forgive you. No, I mean... She clenched her jaw and stared at something in the distance. My mother used to tell me there's a proper order for everything. I never understood what she meant. Why she thought people should wait until marriage. She looked at him, tears in her eyes. But I get it now. Don't get me wrong, I love Arya with all my heart. I just see the wisdom in what my mother used to tell me. Guilt rose in him. He had something to do with that as well. It was because of him that she'd been left alone to bear his child and raise her. His shoulder muscles tightened. I'm sorry. We were in love. We didn't think about the consequences. But it's not too late. Kendra gave him a sad smile before she stepped back from him forcing him to let his arm fall. Some things can't be repaired, Jacob. He wanted to argue with her, to force her to see that he could repair the damage. They could make this work. But there was a finality about her sentence that left him silent. And then it hit him. Maybe Kendra wasn't feeling what he was feeling. Maybe he was still in love with her, but she'd gotten over him. Maybe she'd moved on. He swallowed down the cold feeling that started in his stomach and spread throughout him. Arya grew excited as they neared Santa's cottage. Jacob tried to ignore the rejection from Kendra, but it seeped into his bones. He was left with a cold heart and no hope for a future with her and his daughter. Chapter 16 Kendra smiled as Arya climbed onto Santa's lap. She was trying to forget what Jacob and she had talked about moments before. Focusing on the past had not helped her at all in her life. She needed to get past that. Look to the future. Arya giggled at something Santa said, and Kendra reached for her phone, but it wasn't in her pocket. Oh, man. What? Jacob asked. I think I forgot my phone at home or left it in the car. Can you take a picture of Arya on Santa's lap? Sure. Jacob pulled out his phone and focused it. Then he snapped several pictures of her as she talked to Santa. Then Santa told her to smile for the camera, and Jacob got another few in. Oh, that last one looked really good, Kendra said. I think so, too. He showed her the picture. I like her smile. Kendra nodded, her emotions surging again. She really needed to get away from Jacob. 
He was messing with her head. His fingers flew over his screen. I'll send them to you. Thanks. She shoved her hands into her coat pockets and tried not to think about how nice Jacob was being. He was leaving. End of story. She wasn't going to let herself get all caught up in him. Distance. That's all she needed. Physical distance. Emotional distance. If she could just get through the next couple of days, then she'd be fine. Arya cupped her hand and whispered something into Santa's ear. He smiled at her and nodded. Then Arya jumped down from his lap and Mrs. Claus handed her a candy cane. Arya came running to them, grinning and holding up the candy. Look what I got! That's great, sweetheart. Kendra took her daughter's hand. Let's go home. We need to get you to bed. I'm not tired. I know, but let's get ready for bed anyway. Arya's feet seemed to drag, so Kendra picked up her daughter and carried her to the car. Arya put her head on Kendra's shoulder. Will you and Jake sing me a good night song? Jake can sing you a song. I have to... Kendra desperately tried to think of an excuse not to be around. She didn't think she could handle hearing any more of Jacob's songs. Do some things. Lame, but it would have to do. Arya closed her eyes and snuggled into Kendra. Yeah, that girl wasn't tired at all. Kendra tried not to laugh as she walked with Jacob to his car. The drive home didn't take long, and soon Arya was in her pajamas and ready for bed. Jacob brought his guitar into her bedroom, and Kendra knew that was her cue to get out of there. As she headed toward the door, Arya held out a hand to her. Mommy, stay! I'm sorry, I need to go. As she searched for her excuse, her gaze landed on Jacob. He looked like he was concentrating on his guitar, but she could see his shoulders tense. It was as if he were waiting for her to finish the sentence. When she didn't say anything, he met her gaze. Her mouth went dry, and she suddenly lost all coherent thought. Sit next to me, Mommy, Arya pleaded as she patted the space on her bed next to her. She could tell she wasn't going to get out of this. Kendra sighed and sat next to her daughter. Okay. Jacob took the chair on the other side of the bed and struck a chord. Arya clapped her hands when she recognized the song. It was another one of his hits. Kendra tried not to listen as he sang about the woman with the musical laugh, but she couldn't help it. Her emotions mixed up inside her as his smooth voice traveled over her. Jacob sang one more song before Kendra kissed Arya's forehead and told her to have a good night. She slipped out of the room, but Jacob didn't follow her. She peeked inside the bedroom when he didn't materialize. Are you ready to exchange wishes? Jacob said, kneeling beside her bed. Yes. How do we do it? I tell you mine, and you tell me yours. I'll go first, okay? Kendra crossed her fingers. Arya nodded. Okay. He leaned down close to her ear and whispered something. It took some time, and Kendra wondered what he was saying. Then he pulled back and said, That's my wish. Arya placed her hands on his cheeks. That's a good wish. Thank you. I hope you get your wish. Arya said with the innocence of a five-year-old. Me too. Jacob's voice was husky. He smoothed her hair from her forehead. Now what's your special wish? Arya motioned for him to come closer. Then she cupped her hand and whispered into his ear. His eyebrows shot up, but he smiled and nodded. That's a great wish. They talked back and forth a minute, but their whispers were so quiet she couldn't hear. She leaned closer, peering around the door as much as she dared. Arya peered up at Jacob, her eyes wide. Do you think it could come true? He paused for a second, then nodded. I think it could. Oh, I hope so. 
Arya clenched her hands into fists and made a face like she was hoping really hard. Have sweet dreams, Jacob said and kissed her on the forehead. Good night. Jacob stood and grabbed his guitar. He touched Arya's face one last time before he headed out into the hallway. Kendra jumped back so he didn't bump into her. Oh, he whispered. I didn't know you were right there. She motioned and then joined him in the kitchen so they could talk. As soon as he entered, she rounded on him. Did she tell you? He nodded, his face masked from emotion. Okay then, what is it? He drew in a large breath and exhaled slowly. I don't think you're going to like it. Why? What did she wish for? Dread pooled in Kendra's stomach as she thought of one wish it could be. Something that couldn't be wrapped and under the tree. Please, not a new daddy. Nothing like that. Jacob scrubbed a hand down his face, his guitar still slung around his neck. She wished for you to sing again. Kendra's first reaction was to gape at him. What? That's ridiculous. I sing. She brushed her hair over her shoulder and let out a frustrated breath. I sing all the time. Jacob raised one eyebrow but didn't say anything. He just stood there and stared at her. Don't you look at me like that. He didn't have to say a word. She knew what he was thinking. But he was wrong. It wasn't like that. Maybe she hadn't been singing much lately. So what? Did he think it was because of him? He was so not getting the satisfaction. She'd never admit to that. I'm not looking at you any particular way. Yes, you are. Jacob slowly removed his guitar from over his shoulder and leaned it up against the wall. I have no judgment. Kendra stared at the Formica tabletop. Why would Arya want me to sing? Why make a Christmas wish about it? I don't get it. Jacob paused, then took a step toward her. When he spoke, his voice was low. She told me you used to sing when she was little. Made her happy, that's all. She just misses it. Guilt threaded its way into Kendra's chest. Had it really been that long since she'd sung to her daughter? When did she decide singing reminded her too much of Jacob? Maybe when her daughter started singing his hit songs? When she wanted to hear them over and over? Maybe that's when it became too much for her. Tears sprang to her eyes and she blinked them back. I... I didn't realize. Jacob put his arms around her and pulled her to his chest. She should have resisted, stepped back so he couldn't touch her. But she didn't want to. She buried her face in the soft fabric of his shirt and breathed in his smell. He didn't say anything. He simply held her while she tried not to cry. She admitted, though, that she was not very successful at it. When had she grown a wall around her heart? She hadn't been paying attention. She hadn't realized she'd cut out the music from her life. Aria must equate her being happy with singing. But the girl didn't understand. How could she? She was just a little girl. Innocent, childlike, so full of faith. She didn't know the heartache that comes with putting yourself out there. She couldn't understand why singing reminded Kendra of too much. She didn't want her daughter to know heartache. But what about her? Kendra was standing in her kitchen, clinging to the man who was going to be leaving Highland Falls in a matter of days. And who knew when he would be coming back? Maybe not for months. She shouldn't be allowing her heart to want him. She pulled back from Jacob. You'd better go. Why? Because I have to get things done. That was the worst excuse in the world, but she couldn't think under pressure. Jacob looked like he wanted to say something, but he just nodded and picked up his guitar. Okay. I'll leave. 
Kendra thought she'd feel better once he was gone, but the sigh of relief never came. Instead, a hole in her heart made her feel empty inside. Chapter 17 Jacob wasn't looking forward to facing his mother again, but it was time. He couldn't put off seeing her any longer. It wasn't so much that he was mad, even though he was. He was hurt more than anything. He felt like he didn't know his mother at all. As he pulled up in front of her house, he saw a car parked there he didn't recognize. It had Florida plates. The hairs on the back of his neck rose. Nathan, his father, lived in Florida. A myriad of emotions welled in him as he stared at the 2010 Ford Taurus. Anger, hurt, and betrayal all wrestled for attention. He didn't want to talk to Nathan. He didn't deserve anything from him. A dark figure moved on the porch and Jacob's anger flared. It was Nathan. He could see his profile. Was he standing on the porch, waiting in the dark for him like a predator? Before Jacob could think, he hopped out of his car and stormed up to the house. What are you doing here? Nathan turned, and his appearance startled Jacob. His once dark hair was now mostly gray. His muscular physique had faded into a lanky frame, which Jacob could see even through his winter coat. He wore glasses, which Jacob had never seen on him. He looked weathered, weary. He took a tentative step. It's so good to see you. Jacob shook off the initial shock and scowled. I asked what you were doing here. I need to talk to you. Your mother wouldn't give me your number. How'd you find out I was here? The media? Some girl posted a picture of you in a drive through That made sense. He didn't usually care what people posted about him, but this time it allowed his father to find him. Not that he was hiding, but he didn't want to face him right now. Not with everything else going on in his life. Well, you found me. Now you can leave. Nathan sighed and rubbed a hand over his face. Can I buy you a cup of coffee? Irritation set in. He didn't owe anything to this man. The man who left him and his mother never to return? I don't think so. I think you should leave. Nathan hesitated. Is there no changing your mind? No. For a second... Jacob thought Nathan would do as he asked. He passed Jacob and started toward his car. Then, he turned and blurted out, I have cancer. Jacob stared at Nathan, emotion and confusing thoughts swirling in him. What do you expect me to say to that? Nathan exhaled and held out his empty hands. I don't know. I've made mistakes, I realize that. I should have done more to keep in touch with you. That's on me. I guess I was just hoping we could reconnect before my time is up. You're dying? Why did those words stick to his tongue? He shouldn't care about this man, the man who didn't care about him as he grew up. Why should it matter that he was dying? but even though he tried to wall off his emotions, he couldn't help the sting behind his eyes. Nathan nodded. It's terminal. How long? Two words. They were hard to say, and it seemed an eternity before his father answered them. Three months? Maybe four? Jacob raked a hand through his hair. And I expect you want something from me. Money to seek another opinion? Or to get a treatment? His father shook his head. There is no treatment. Nothing more than I've already done. I don't want anything from you other than a second chance. I want to get to know my boy. His voice broke as he said the last sentence, 
and Jacob sucked in a breath. His anger melted away as he looked at Nathan. His father was standing before him, only wanting a chance, much like he was asking of Kendra. Jacob wasn't sure if he would regret the decision, but he slowly nodded. Let's go talk. I'll buy the coffee. Maybe a piece of pie if they have any left. His father's face relaxed and he nodded. Thank you. You can follow me. I know a good diner. Jacob climbed into his car and drove the half mile to the downtown strip. He stopped at Myrtle's, his favorite diner in the small town of Highland Falls. He entered the diner after his father parked and joined him. After they were seated, he took a moment to study his father. Life hadn't been kind to him. The deep wrinkles on his face seemed incongruent with what he remembered. Of course, he hadn't seen his father in person since he was young. He did have one photograph he managed to hide from his mother so it wouldn't be destroyed. They chatted small talk for a minute, and the waitress took their pie orders. But Jacob wasn't that much into chatting about the weather. He tapped his fingers on the table, itching to be blunt and ask what he'd wanted to know for the last 18 years. He debated for a minute, then just said it. I know why you came back. What I want to know is why you left in the first place. Nathan winced, but met his gaze. He waited a moment before speaking. I loved your mother. I had a crush on her for years, before she even knew I existed. But there's something funny that happens when you fall for someone from afar. I think I fell for the idea of her. And then when we became a couple, I was faced with reality. He fiddled with his napkin. We had a whirlwind courtship, married too young. Things between us started out rocky and grew worse. But then you were born, and things started to look better. It started to seem like she was coming around. Jacob studied his father. Coming around? What does that mean? His father drew in a deep breath, letting it out slowly. Your mother was engaged to a man before she and I married. Wait, what? Engaged? To whom? The question came out, but Jacob had a sneaking suspicion he knew the answer already. A man named Michael? He was the president of our graduating class. She and he were inseparable our senior year. She was heartbroken when the engagement ended and Michael left town. I don't think she was thinking clearly when she married me. I think she was still on the rebound. The waitress brought them their pie and coffee. Nathan picked up his spoon and stirred in a packet of sugar. Your mother blamed me for making her miserable. We fought a lot. But after you were born, she mellowed out. She seemed to forget about our past, the things she hated me for. I thought it was our second chance. But then I found out she was writing to Michael. Nathan's jaw worked as he stirred his coffee. She was still having a relationship with him, just one through distance. Jacob groaned and leaned back in his booth seat. That must have been hard for you. I tried to make things work between us, but she resented me for finding out and hated me for being upset about it. She was so bitter. Every day things got worse. And your mother, she would play head games with me. Like what? She would act like she didn't know what I was talking about when clearly she did. She would pretend she was asleep when she didn't want to talk to me. She even lied and said she was pregnant near the end before I left. Jacob wouldn't have believed it a week ago, but now, after what happened earlier, he'd had his eyes opened, and he didn't like what he saw. In the end, I felt trapped in a loveless marriage and manipulated into working at a job I hated. Each month, I handed my check over to your mother. That's what I was to her, a source of income. I left because I couldn't see any other way out. 
and your mother has been punishing me ever since. Thoughts swirled around in Jacob's mind as he sat and pondered what his father said. Had his mother pushed his father away, like she'd pushed Kendra and him apart? All his life, his father had been the villain, the one who left and broke his mother. But he was starting to see things in a different light. He was starting to see his mother had something to do with this. His father stuck his fork into his pie. Anyway, I know I haven't been there for you. I tried to send birthday cards when I could. I I know it wasn't enough. I wanted to see you, but your mother kept you from me. She wouldn't let me talk to you on the phone. She threatened that if I ever showed up, she'd call the cops and get a restraining order. Jacob coughed into his fist. He shouldn't be surprised, but he was. Seriously? How could she do that? Didn't you have partial custody? Nathan sighed and shrank back. I made the mistake of signing over my parental rights when I left your mother. She could have made good on her threat. He shook his head slowly. I didn't want to rock the boat. I honestly didn't want to see her ever again. I know that wasn't fair to you, and I'm sorry. Jacob stared at his father, a new understanding settling in. This was not the man he hated growing up. This was a man who was beaten down. A man who did the best he could with the circumstances he was given. Jacob reached across the table and took his father's hand. I forgive you. Tears sprang to his father's eyes and he blinked. You don't know what that means to me. Jacob fought back emotion. So much time had been lost, and now there wasn't much time left. He didn't know where to start. Tell me about your life in Florida. I don't know much. His father swallowed. I worked on the docks for the last 12 years. It was a job, but I quit last week. I'm moving to Denver to be closer to family. It had been years since Jacob had seen any of his father's side of the family. He knew he had a grandmother and an aunt, but he didn't know anything more. He frowned. I'm sorry. Jacob's throat closed. About how I treated you. His father waved his hand, dismissing it. I don't blame you. I'm glad. So, tell me about yourself. Your singing career has taken off. I want to hear all about it. His father gave him a small smile. Jacob wrapped his hands around his coffee cup as he talked. Too many emotions and thoughts were fighting for his attention. He didn't know what he was going to do about his mother. He had some thinking to do, and he probably should get a room at the Cobblestone Inn tonight. He wasn't in any mood to face her. Chapter 18 Kendra finished breaking down the last box and tossed it in the recycling pile. It was almost time to leave for the day, and she was ready for the break. She needed a hot bath and a good book to curl up with. Last night was an emotional roller coaster. Finding out what her daughter wanted most for Christmas, and then realizing that in order to give it to her, she had to cut out her heart and hand it to Jacob. She took in a deep breath, a cleansing breath. Maybe her daughter would be happy if she just bought her an electric keyboard or something musical. Kendra took off her dollar store apron and hung it on the hook. Was it really all that hard to sing for her daughter? Why was she being so stupid and emotional over it? Why did it all have to lead back to Jacob and how he hurt her? That was the past, and she was okay leaving it in the past. She tried so hard to get over it, but if she were being honest with herself, she was no closer to being over Jacob today than she had been the day she'd found out he'd left Highland Falls. What was it about him that she couldn't get over? Yes, he was handsome, but so were other men. He could sing, but so what? 
She didn't want to think about his other qualities. His kind heart, or the way he would go out of his way to do small things for her, like how he'd been taking her to and from work this week. She couldn't focus on those things because she was already close to crying, and he was going to be here any second to pick her up. Kendra? She whirled around, her heart pounding. When did Jacob come into the back room? Had he been there watching her struggle with her emotions? She quickly squared her shoulders and hoped the tears stinging her eyes were not noticeable. Sorry, I was just finishing up. It's five after. I figured you'd be back here. Jacob leaned against the wall, his hands in his coat pockets. Your car is done. We can go pick it up after we get Aria. He studied her. Are you okay? She avoided his gaze. I'm fine. It's just been a long day. Let's go get Aria. When does school get out for Christmas break? Friday is her last day, Kendra said. The day before Christmas Eve? They sure don't give them much break time, do they? Kendra shook her head just as she saw the door swing open. Shelly walked in. Hey, only employees are allowed back here. What are you doing, Kendra? Jacob pushed off the wall and raised his hands in a calm down motion. Sorry, I came back here to get Kendra. I didn't mean to break any rules. Shelly glared at him. Get out of here. She whirled on Kendra, her eyes blazing. Don't bother coming in tomorrow. I've had enough of you and your lazy attitude. You're fired. Kendra's mouth dropped in shock. She couldn't say anything. No words would form. Flashes of her and Arya sitting alone on Christmas Day, no heat, no presence, skittered through her mind. Wait, it was my fault. Don't fire Kendra. She had nothing to do with it. She was back here talking with you. I don't know how long you've been in here. Shelley folded her arms. She knew the rules. Jacob took a step toward Kendra. I got here at five after. Kendra was already off the clock, I swear. Shelley's cheeks turned red and puffed out. She looked like she was going to blow. Get out, both of you. It's okay, Jacob, let's just leave. Kendra forced her legs to walk out of the back room and through the store. Janet rushed to her and grabbed her arm. What was that about? Did she really just fire you? She asked in hushed tones. Yes. Kendra tried not to cry, but the tears were already sliding down her cheeks. Shelley's voice must have carried. Great. She's a demon, Janet spat out. I can't believe she did that right before Christmas. Kendra placed her hands on Janet's shoulders. It's okay, I'll get another job. She wasn't sure how, but she knew she had to. Of course you will, and it will be much better than this one, and it will pay more. Janet pulled her into a hug. Shelley came out of the back room, and Janet scurried away before she could get yelled at, too. Kendra wiped at her cheeks and rushed outside, Jacob following after her. I'm so sorry, he said. I can call and talk to corporate, see if I can get you your job back. She turned to him, the sunset causing the sky behind him to be pink and blue. It's not you, it's Shelley. She fired you because of me. I feel terrible. Kendra looked at him. He did look like he felt terrible. In fact, he had dark circles under his eyes that she hadn't noticed until now. Had he slept at all last night? You don't look so good. Jacob exhaled, his breath coming out in a white cloud of fog. Something happened last night. A cold feeling snaked through Kendra. What? I saw my father. What? He's here? Kendra leaned against his car, her nerves in a jumble. Jacob had never talked much about his father. All she knew is that he left when Jacob was little and he hadn't seen much of him since. She knew his father angered him, how he left like he did. 
It's kind of a long story. Her heart went out to him. He must be in such an emotional state having seen his father. She couldn't even imagine. Let's go pick up Arya. After we get my car, you can come over and we can talk. He nodded and opened the passenger door for her. Okay. Twenty minutes later, Arya was sitting at the coffee table putting a puzzle together, and she and Jacob were in her kitchen. She motioned to the chairs. Do you want to sit? No, I think I have too much pent-up energy for that. She leaned against the counter. Okay, what happened? Did you talk to your father? Yes. What did he want? She prayed his father wasn't here to demand money from him. She knew that would hurt Jacob badly. He didn't deserve that. He's dying. Jacob rubbed his temples and paced the floor. He came to find me because he has stage four pancreatic cancer. Oh, dear heavens. Kendra clutched at the hem of her shirt. That was bad. Jacob must be in shock. He looked like it. His eyes were wide and bloodshot. He kept pacing the kitchen floor back and forth. He told me some things, Kendra. Some things about my mother and their relationship. He ran a hand through his hair, then gripped it in a fist hold. I can't believe she did these things, and yet I know she did. Kendra didn't know what to say. What did she do? She finally asked, her voice almost a whisper. She kept him from me. My own father. I grew up without a dad because of her. He looked like he was going to break down. Before she could stop herself, she closed the space between them and wrapped her arms around him. I'm so sorry, that's horrible. I don't want to hate her, but right now I'm just so angry. She took away my father, and she took away the only woman I've ever loved. I lost you, and I don't know if I can ever get you back. How could she do that to me? That wasn't a choice she had to make. That was my own choice. If it weren't for her, I never would have lost you. His words broke her heart, and she reached up and cupped his cheeks. The feeling of his skin on hers, the roughness of his five o'clock shadow, made her heart do crazy things. He smelled so good, like musk, pine trees, and cinnamon all rolled into one. It was rugged, and yet so much like him. A flood of memories came back to her. How she'd curl up on the couch beside him, how she loved to be close to him. All rational thought left her. I'm right here, Jacob. He closed his eyes and placed his forehead on hers. You're here, but I feel you slipping through my fingers. The way he said it, with such anguish, made her want to show him how much she cared, how much she loved him. She paused, her heart hammering. She loved him. Was that true? Did she still love him after all this time? Had she always loved him? She didn't have to ponder very long. She knew the answer deep down to her toes. Jacob was her one true love. She had fallen in love with him, hard and fast, back when they were barely adults. She had not stopped loving him. He was everything she needed, everything she ever wanted. He was the missing piece of her. She pulled him closer to her until his lips were a whisper from hers. She stared at him until he opened his eyes, his gaze questioning. She saw in the depths the same desire that was coursing through her. I'm right here, she whispered again. His mouth claimed hers and she clung to him as his kiss enveloped her. Jacob's kisses were usually like a slow song, rocking her gently into the rhythm. But this was different. Passionate, desperate, 
a fire that burned hot and rocked her to her core. A thousand nerve endings in her body exploded as his lips moved over hers. She threaded her fingers in his hair. He groaned and pressed her up against the counter, his hands on her back. Need, want, and desire all mixed as he kissed her lips, her cheeks, her jaw, and then back to her mouth. She lost herself to him. And his smell, the feel of his hands on her lower back, How many nights she dreamt of Jacob, only to have him evaporate in the morning sunlight. Mommy, come look! Arya called from the other room. Kendra jumped back from Jacob, her lungs pulling in the air she desperately needed. Her heart beat out a staccato rhythm. Okay, she said when she thought her voice wouldn't fail her. Coming! Jacob ducked his head, running a hand over his hair. Are you okay? She asked quietly. He nodded. Go to her, I'm fine. Her knees wobbled as she walked into the other room. Kissing Jacob had awakened her memories. All the old feelings had come back, only this time they felt magnified. She loved Jacob with all her being. She needed him in her life. As she entered the living room, Arya turned to her. Come see, I've finished the puzzle. Sitting on the coffee table next to her puzzle was Arya's Dora radio. She turned on her favorite station and Jacob's low voice crooned from the speakers. Kendra sucked in a breath. She loved Jacob needed him. But he was a famous country music star. His life was not in Highland Falls. It never would be. He was leaving to go on tour after Christmas. He had fans to sing to, albums to create, and no time to be with her. She forced herself to smile at Aria. Very good, sweetie. You did a great job. Aria began ripping apart the puzzle. I'm going to do it again. Okay, that's a good idea. Kendra slowly walked back into the kitchen, her heart in her throat. Jacob was back to pacing the floor. When she entered, he stopped and turned toward her. I have to go. I need to take care of some things. Will you be all right for a couple of days? Do you need any money? Kendra stared at him, a cold feeling spreading through her stomach. This was it. This is what she had been dreading all this week. You're leaving? Just for a couple of days. He pulled out his wallet and took out some bills. He extended them to her. Please take this. He was disappearing. Again. That figured. That's what he was good at. She took a step back. I don't want your money, Jacob. I'm not one of your employees. She spat the words. It's not like that. He put the money back, looking like maybe he realized it had been insulting. I'll be back before Christmas. Frustration and anger burned in Kendra's throat. If she welcomed him back, he'd just leave her again and again. She was not going to be so stupid this time. She wasn't going to sit around and wait for Jacob Mitchell to come back into her life. She was done staring out the window, waiting. She had a chance to start fresh. A new job. A new life. And she needed to let Jacob go. I don't want you to come back. Kendra swallowed, a sick feeling sticking in her gut. What? You heard me. He shoved his wallet back into his pocket. I heard you, but I don't understand. I just need to take care of a few things. I'm coming back. Kendra stiffened. But then you're leaving again. Maybe not. I need to go see how much it would cost me to cancel my tour. The words shocked Kendra, but she swallowed back the hope that he was telling her the truth. The reality was, he would always be leaving her. If it's not this tour, it will be another one. 
His eyes grew wide. What do you want me to do? Quit my job? Stop making albums? That's crazy, Kendra. I can't do that. Somewhere in the back of her mind, she knew she sounded like a lunatic, but she couldn't help it. Jacob hadn't cared enough about her six years ago to come find her and figure out what had happened. She didn't want to follow him to Nashville, only to be left on the curb when someone else came along. And I can't sit around here waiting for you. Two days. I'm going to be gone for two stinking days. And you're saying you can't handle that? She sighed and folded her arms across her chest. No. I'm saying I can't handle being unimportant in your life. Saying it out loud, hearing the words confessed in the open air made it more real somehow. That was the real reason she couldn't fall back in love with Jacob. Because he hadn't loved her enough to come looking for her. Tears sprang to her eyes and she ran from the room, locking herself in her bedroom. She threw herself onto her bed, the tears blurring her vision. The front door opened and slammed shut and she heard Jacob's boots crunch the snow. Then his car started and he took off. Out of her life. For good. Chapter 19 Jacob walked into his manager's office, his nerves tied up. He clenched his hands as Rick turned around in his office chair, his eyebrows high on his forehead like they were chasing his receding hairline. He was sharp and had a great eye for the music business. Jacob, I thought you were visiting your mother. I am. I, I was, I mean. I came back because I've had a family emergency and I need to know how much it would cost me to cancel these two upcoming tours. Rick's mouth fell open as he shuffled papers around on his desk. Cancel them? What's wrong? Are you sick? No, but a family member is. How much? Silence suffocated the room for a moment while Rick stared at the ceiling, doing some mental calculations. Hundreds of thousands of dollars? Maybe as much as 800,000. He gave Jacob a hard stare. I wouldn't advise it. Not unless it's absolutely necessary. Jacob let out a breath as he sat in the chair opposite Rick's desk. Hundreds of thousands, but not millions. He could afford to lose that. Let's cancel them. What's going on? Rick pressed. I met my estranged father. He's dying. Only has three months to live. Rick swore and scrubbed a hand over his face. Jeez, Jacob, I'm sorry. I need to take time off. I don't want to do this to you, but I need more than the three months. Can we push back the next album release? Rick eyed him. Yes. How far? We can push it back a month, maybe two? What else has come up? How much did he want to tell Rick? Jacob trusted him, but he wasn't sure how much Rick would understand. He shifted his weight and gripped the armrests. I have to right some wrongs. Regarding your father? No, this is about a woman. Rick got a funny expression on his face. This one happened to be the woman with chocolate brown eyes and a laugh that's so musical you know the notes by heart. Having his own lyrics thrown at him made Jacob stiffen. It might be. Rick smiled. All right, take the time off. But I hope I'm not making a huge mistake. What do you mean? I hope when you're done you aren't out of inspiration for creating new hit songs. Rick gave him a knowing look. Jacob shook his head. Believe me. When I'm through winning her back, there will be a wealth of inspiration. Rick chuckled under his breath. Good luck. I'll need it. Jacob left Rick's office. The sun glared and he slipped on his sunglasses. He'd left Kendra yesterday, angrier than he'd been in a long time. But the longer he stewed about it, the more he realized Kendra wasn't acting out of anger. 
She was hurt, and he'd been the one to hurt her. He'd told himself for years that it was her fault they'd broken up. She was the one who wouldn't talk to him. But deep down, he knew he was just as guilty. He'd left Highland Falls, angry at her for whatever stupid fight they'd had. It had been so long, he didn't even remember what it was. And part of him expected her to be the one to make the move, to call and apologize to him. And when that didn't happen, he'd been stubborn enough to let things die. He knew from watching too many stupid rom-coms that women expected men to make a grand gesture. When she didn't call, he should have hopped on a plane and sought her out. Well, he wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. He was not going to let Kendra walk out of his life without doing everything in his power to win her back. He was going to bend over backwards and give her the grandest gesture he could think up. He pulled out of the parking lot and headed to his home to start packing and making arrangements. He was going to need a place to rent in Denver so he could be close to his father. And he needed to go ring shopping. Chapter 20 Kendra paid the clerk and picked up the red and white striped shopping bag. Have a Merry Christmas, the girl said, a bright smile on her face. Unlikely. It was Christmas Eve, and Kendra felt about as merry as a soggy piece of toast. There was nothing to be merry about. Jacob was gone, and she was jobless, and if she didn't manage to find work soon, she'd be moving back in with her mother. She loved her mother, but that was the last thing she wanted to do. She managed to nod as Arya tugged on the hem of her coat. Can we go to the fountain? It's the middle of the day, sweetheart. It won't be all lit up until tonight. I don't care. I want to put my wish in one more time. Her blue eyes stared up at Kendra, and she couldn't refuse. All right. Arya clapped her hands. Yay! But hold my hand as we cross the street, okay? Arya nodded. Okay, Mommy. Kendra pushed open the door and led her daughter down the sidewalk. Temperatures had actually gotten into the 40s the last few days, and most of the snow had melted. Arya skipped along beside her as they neared the corner. Can I have a penny? After we get to the fountain. Arya was content with that answer and hummed a song as they crossed the street together. As soon as they stepped onto the other sidewalk, she took off for the fountain. Kendra chuckled under her breath, despite her dark mood. Her daughter had a way of making her laugh. At least she had Arya in her life. No matter how depressing things got, she had the sunshine of a little girl who loved her. Hurry, Mommy! Arya danced on her tiptoes as Kendra came up the walkway. She gave her daughter a penny, and Arya took a good 30 seconds concentrating on her wish. Then she tossed it into the fountain. Kendra swallowed, knowing what it was her daughter was wishing for. She had to get over whatever it was that blocked her. She had to sing to her daughter. The problem was... After having had Jacob back in her life for a few days, she'd fallen for him, and her heart was breaking all over again. But this time, it was worse. His songs, his music, it had weaved itself into her heart, and now that he was gone, she was left with large, gaping holes missing. She was a ghost of a person again, shattered and lifeless. After she'd confessed that she felt like he didn't think she was important in his life, she'd almost expected him to come after her, to knock on her bedroom door and reject that notion. She had hoped he would deny it. But no, he'd left, just like he had so many years ago. And that's what hurt the worst. But over these last few days, she'd been thinking about how stupid she'd acted, childish, She'd been unreasonable with him, and it was her fault that he was gone. Open the door, Mommy! 
Arya danced around the car, and Kendra snapped out of her thoughts. Had she really been standing there staring at her car keys? Sorry. Kendra got her daughter into the car and then slipped into the driver's seat. Turn on the radio. Kendra didn't want to turn on the radio. The last thing she wanted was to hear another one of Jacob's hit songs playing. But she couldn't keep her daughter from the magic of music. Not when it ran through her soul like it had Jacob's. Okay. She flipped on the country music station, but then pressed the button to change to the one playing Christmas music. Aria clapped when Jingle Bell Rock came on. It was one of her favorites. This was it? This was the perfect opportunity to give her daughter what she wanted. Kendra just had to suck it up and sing along with the radio. She checked her rearview mirror, then pulled out into traffic. As the song played on the radio, Kendra worked up her courage and started singing along with the second verse. Arya joined in, and Kendra sang louder. They continued as the next song came on, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Arya squealed as the song ended and a commercial came on. You sang the songs, Mommy! Kendra blinked back her emotions. I did. That was my wish! My secret Christmas wish! And it happened! Kendra faked a gasp. It was? Yes! And it came early, one day before Christmas! Well, she said, trying not to get emotional. I'm glad it did. Me too. I want you to sing and be happy. Kendra gripped the steering wheel as she pulled into their driveway, her daughter's words ringing in her ears. Be happy. That was impossible. She couldn't be happy without Jacob. She bit her cheek as she realized what she'd just admitted to herself. He made her happy. She loved Jacob, and she was only half a person without him. Memories of their fight came to her again, like they'd plagued her for the last three days. She had acted so terrible to him, just as she had years ago when they'd had a fight before she left for Europe. History had repeated itself, and now she was alone, just like last time. What had she done? Had she ruined her chance for happiness? She'd pushed Jacob away because she worried he was going to abandon her again. So, she'd made sure she was the one who walked, the one who shoved him away first. But it hadn't protected her heart. It had shattered it. Get out, Mommy, Arya said from the back seat. Oh, Kendra realized she'd parked the car and was sitting there, the car running. She turned off the ignition and climbed out. Arya happily jaunted up the walkway with her. What time is Santa coming tonight? Late, after you go to sleep. Kendra opened the door. And can we sing Christmas songs tonight? Kendra slowly nodded. All right, sweetheart. Arya jumped up and down. Yay! Can I watch Dora? Why don't you get out your flannel board? We can decorate your Christmas tree. We've had enough screen time this morning. Her shoulders slumped, but she said, Okay. A noise came from the other room. It sounded like her phone, but she thought it was with her in her purse. And she left it at home again. She shook her head at herself and walked into the kitchen. Her phone buzzed with another text. Turn on the radio. Where are you? Turn on the radio now. Wow, what was she talking about? Something crazy must have happened. Maybe Janet won something from the radio? Kendra pressed to call Janet and waited for her to pick up. Are you home? Do you have the radio on? Hello to you, too. Kendra rolled her eyes, but her lips curled up in a smile. Janet was always such a drama queen. Oh my gosh, there's no time for that. 
Are you listening to the radio? No. Go turn it on. KLCD, hurry! Kendra could picture Janet waving her hands around like she was trying to blow her nails dry. All right, jeez, just a second. Kendra walked into the living room and grabbed Aria's little Dora the Explorer radio. Aria didn't notice. She was too busy playing with her felt shapes. Kendra brought it into her bedroom and shut the door. Then she flipped on the radio. It was already tuned to the country station. It was Aria's favorite. The popular DJ Chad Anderson spoke, and it took a second for Kendra to realize what he was saying. Having our station with us a special surprise. Someone has come in this morning asking to get on the radio. Now, we don't normally do this, folks, but this is someone you are all familiar with on this radio station, so we were apt to grant him this wish. Thank you so much, Chad. Jacob's voice was unmistakable, and Kendra sat down and gripped her bedspread. Now I'm going to tell you, when Jacob Mitchell entered my little sound booth, I was a bit starstruck. It's not every day that this small station in Colorado gets a visit like this. But enough about me. Jacob has something he'd like to say. Yes, I do, Chad. I've recently had some things come up in my personal life that have forced me to cancel my upcoming tour, and I'm deeply sorry about this. Don't worry, all your tickets will be refunded. And in case you're wondering, I'm fine, but a family member has been diagnosed with a terminal illness, and I'm taking some time off from things. Kendra drew in a shaky breath. He really did cancel his tour? Her mind spun with what that would mean for Jacob financially and for his relationship with his father. Jacob continued. But that's not why I'm here today. It's not? Chad asked. No. Today, I need your help in correcting a mistake I made several years ago. I let someone slip away from me. Someone I shouldn't have let go. And recently, we've reconnected, but like an idiot, I did something that upset her, and I want to fix things between us. What can we do, Jacob? As I was flying back, I had this song come to me, so I wrote it down. I've never played it before, but I was wondering, would you let me sing it for the first time on air? We'd be honored. There were a few moments of silence, then the strum of a guitar and Kendra's heart lodged in her throat as she heard Jacob start to sing. My life was once so full and free. I had love and love had me. But I walked away and never could see that you were the one who completed me. I love you, Kendra. I'm asking on bended knee. Will you marry me? Her vision blurred as his song lyrics fully registered in her head. Jacob was asking her to marry him? She was too shocked to know what to think. Then she realized Chad was talking again. Whoa, this is big! You just asked a girl to marry you? That's a first for KLCD, folks! Yes, Jacob said. I should have married this girl six years ago. And even though we've been apart, my heart has always been with her. Every song I sing is about her. Every time I breathe in, it's her I'm thinking about. I can't live another day without her as my bride. Wow, how can she not say yes to you after that speech? Jacob chuckled. That's what I'm hoping, Chad. How will our listeners know if she said yes? Tune in tonight to Channel 10. If she said yes, I'll make sure it makes the news. If she said no, then you'll know by the sound of my wretched cries as I go hide somewhere to lick my wounds. A text came through on Kendra's phone and she jumped. She'd been holding her breath and staring at the Dora radio for so long she'd forgotten she even owned a phone. She picked it up. The text was from Jacob. I'm outside your house with a news crew. If your answer is yes, come outside. If not, well... You'll break my heart, but if your answer is no, stay inside and we will leave in ten minutes. Kendra's fingers shook as she read the message over and over. Jacob asked her to marry him, 
and he was waiting outside for the answer. All her brain could focus on was the fact that the radio station was a good one-hour drive from there, and it was impossible for him to be at her house. When the banter continued on the radio between Jacob and Chad, something in her mind clicked, and she realized it must have been taped earlier in the day. Duh. And now, Jacob was outside her house, waiting. And she had no idea what she was going to do. Chapter 21 Jacob blew heat into his hands, even though it wasn't that cold outside. His nerves were frayed. He'd sent the text five minutes ago. Five long minutes. And now he was worried Kendra wouldn't come out. That her answer would be no. He'd planned everything so perfectly. At least he thought he had. He'd even called Janet to bring her in on it so she could make sure Kendra was listening to the radio. He knew Kendra was inside, he knew she had her phone, and yet no text, and no Kendra. The news crew consisted of one guy with a camera. Not really much of a crew, but he couldn't think of what else to say in his text, and he didn't want her to come outside and be on film without a warning. The guy with the camera, he'd said his name was Todd, was standing there like he was bored. So, she gonna come out or what? Jacob swallowed and shrugged. I don't know. Todd chuckled and pulled out a toothpick from his pocket. He put the pick in his mouth like it was the cool thing to do. Would be pretty embarrassing if she didn't come out, huh? Jacob wondered how much bad press he'd get if he decked the guy. Yeah, was all he said. He shoved his fists into his pockets so he wouldn't be tempted. Had another minute passed? Two? Was this his answer? Maybe putting Kendra on the spot like this was a bad idea. Maybe she was mad at him for making it a public thing. Maybe she hated him, and he blew his only chance to... The door opened, and Jacob's heart jumped. Kendra tentatively stepped out onto the porch. She raised her hand like she was shielding her eyes from the sunlight. Jacob? He'd been so happy to see the door open, he'd forgotten what he was going to do. He dropped down to one knee, overjoyed to see her. He pulled out the ring from his pocket and opened the little box. Kendra, I was lost these last few years without you. I miss you. I can't imagine living the next six years without you by my side. I have put my career on hold for you, and today I hold out my heart to you. All I want from you is to say yes. Say you'll be my wife. Jacob wasn't sure exactly what he'd said. He'd strayed from his practice speech and started rambling, but now he held his breath, waiting for Kendra to speak. To say yes. To tell him she'd be his wife. Kendra wiped at her cheeks. Then she ran to him, threw her arms around his neck. Yes, Jacob, I'll marry you. Relief washed over him like cool water, and he stood and picked Kendra up, swinging her around in a circle. I love you, he said after he set her back down on the ground. I've always loved you. Kendra smiled through her tears. I'm sorry for what I said. I was stupid. He cupped her cheeks and kissed her lips, elated that she was there. All his frustrations from a few days ago were gone. He loved her, and all he cared about was that she'd said yes. No, oh, you're not stupid. You're beautiful. The door opened again, and Aria came outside. Jake! She came running to him. He and Kendra broke apart, and he bent down to pick up Arya. Hey, Squirt, how are you? I missed you, she said, putting her head on his shoulder. You did? His heart warmed in his chest. I missed you too, sweetie. I'm glad you're back. Me too, and guess what? Arya looked at him, 
her eyes wide. What? We're going to be a family. You, me, and your mother. Saying the words made his throat constrict and his voice broke. Arya clapped her hands. Yay, a family! Yeah, he said, trying to gain control again of his emotions. Todd, the cameraman, stepped back and put his camera down. Okay, I got it. Glad you didn't end up looking like a schmuck. He chuckled to himself for his lame joke. Yeah, thanks, Jacob said. He'd forgotten Todd was even there, to be honest. All he cared about was Kendra and Arya and that they were together. Together forever. Kendra smiled and leaned in to give him another kiss. I love you, she whispered. I love you too. And he was going to spend the rest of eternity showing her just how much. Epilogue. One year later. Kendra stared at the massive Christmas tree, lit up with a billion tiny white lights and trimmed with golden ribbons. The foyer of the resort was decked out for the holidays, even though the resort was in the sunny Cayman Islands. It was a gorgeous 80 degrees outside, and Arya tugged on her hand, showing her the large fountain in the foyer. Mommy, we can make a wish! Kendra smiled. Yes, we can, sweetie. Although she didn't know what she'd wish for, all her wishes had come true. Jacob walked in, and her heart leapt like it always did when she saw him, even in his silly baseball cap. He came to her and kissed her cheek. I know this isn't a traditional Christmas vacation, but I thought this would be a fun place to relax. Kendra didn't want to tell him, but anywhere in the world would be fine, as long as they were together for Christmas. It's perfect. He pressed his lips to hers and butterflies erupted in her stomach. She hoped she never lost that feeling. The excitement of kissing Jacob Mitchell. It was like a roller coaster ride every time. A woman with bright red curly hair approached them. She looked like she tried to tame her hair, pulled it back, but strands of it had rebelled and worked their way out of the ponytail. Welcome to the Billionaire Club, she said, her smile growing when she saw Aria. Jacob's eyebrows pulled down. This isn't the Diamond Oasis? The woman laughed, throwing her head back. Sorry, yes, of course it is. I just forgot myself for a moment. The locals all call this the Billionaire Club. She motioned. Because of the clientele we attract, come, let's get you and your beautiful family checked in. The woman walked behind the counter and clicked on her keyboard. I'm Kay, by the way. I'll be taking care of everything you need. She smiled, her straight white teeth in contrast to her red lipstick. Arya stood on her tiptoes to try to see over the counter, but she was too short. Kendra picked her up. Kay wore a large ring on her right hand. It was in the shape of an oval, and the stone looked like a speckled turquoise. Arya stared at it as the woman typed. What's your last name? Mitchell, Jacob said. Kay nodded. Yes, here you are in a family suite. She clicked on the keys again and then grabbed two key cards. After keying them to the room, she handed them to Jacob. The pool closes at midnight. Arya wiggled down from Kendra's arms. I want to go see the pool. Okay, let's go get settled in the room first, Kendra said. She turned to Jacob. When will your mother arrive? He stiffened. He'd had a rocky period with her after he learned about his father's illness. Luckily, Jacob had been able to take more than half a year off from his work, and he spent the last few months of his father's life with him, getting to know him. Aria had taken to Jacob's father right away, and they had spent a lot of time together with him and the rest of Jacob's extended family. It was only in the last few months that Jacob had tried to reconnect with his mother. Things were still strained, but 
he knew it was important to mend things. She'll be here tomorrow. Okay. My mother will arrive on Christmas Eve. Kendra was a little anxious about how things would go. They hadn't all gotten together since they'd eloped. Her mother hadn't been super happy with the quick marriage, but maybe after she got to see them so happy, she'd calm down. They found their suite and entered. Lavish was an understatement. Everything was marble or dark wood and accented in gold. They had a jacuzzi tub in the bathroom as well as a shower. The large sliding glass door opened to the beach. Kendra whistled. This is amazing. Arya skipped through the suite, humming to herself. Jacob pulled her close to him. Thank you for the happiest year of my life. I know it's not quite our anniversary, but I wanted to give you your gift. She peered up at him, suddenly curious. Okay. He slipped his hand into his pocket and pulled out a jewelry box. I love you. Kendra opened it and gasped at the beautiful necklace. It had three stones on it. They're birthstones. His, hers, and Arya's. She smiled at him. It's gorgeous! Then she looked at him through her lashes. But it's missing something. He seemed confused. What? We'll have to add a stone. In about seven months. Comprehension struck and his eyes widened. Really? He placed a hand on her abdomen. Are you serious? She nodded. Yes. He blinked, and she could see the emotion gathering in his eyes. I'm so happy. I was hoping you would be. He leaned down and kissed her, slow and thorough. I've never been happier. And Kendra had to admit, she felt the same way. This has been Aria's Christmas Wish, written by Victorine E. Liskey, narrated by Liz Crane. Copyright 2019. Production copyright by Victorine E. Liskey.